The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Coming to you from the studio of the Mr. O'Kagans and the Mrs. Stars, Mrs. Stars, Planet X, the transmission of truth, mission, drugs, try the best, try the best, try the best. Welcome to the Best Damn Podcast. I'm your host, John Keen. As always, I would like to thank you guys for joining me. As such, you please add, follow, and check us out, www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash Best Damn Podcast. Also, if you're watching here on YouTube, please make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and support my work, you can do that, paypal.me forward slash the Best Damn Podcast. Well, guys, I am really excited. Tonight, I have got a really, really cool show for you guys. Um, You know, uh, a guest that I think is really going to open up some minds for people that, you know, have doubts about the existence of extraterrestrials um, and probably about a lot of things, you know, puts religion into question. This is going to be a really, really captivating show. So tonight, uh, without no further ado, I am joined by Gary Parker. Welcome to the show, Gary. Hey, thanks, John. Hey, brother. I appreciate you coming, <laughs> man. I appreciate you coming. I'm I'm really excited. I think, uh, you know, I, I, we was talking off the air. I, I had seen your message. I think it was about a year, year and a half ago, I had heard your message. And, man, you know, it really just spoke to me um, as as truth as you were telling the truth as you genuinely experienced uh what you're going to be talking about tonight so uh i'm i'm very excited for you to share this with uh, the the people um that are watching and listening awesome hey john if, if i can first say something first of all thanks a lot for having me on the air this is awesome i'm excited and also if i can t- now a lot, some of your listeners probably have heard or, or heard some of my stuff because i've done about in the past two years i've done about 40 shows mm-hmm. and a lot of people say well, you know uh, well i don't believe him i you know i hear some of the stuff it's, it's interesting and everything but what i'd like to do is just to start off if your listeners guys if you could do this if you could do this for me if you, if, if you have anybody who's sick in your family, has cancer, has uh, maybe, even if they're totally broke, they're homeless, whatever they are, do me a favor. If you guys would just do this, and, we'll, and, and John and I will explain what this all means later, but if you could do this, if you have any water, like a lake or a pond or a river, anywhere near where you live, okay, go to that water. Stand in the water. Take off your shoes and socks. You have to be connected to the earth. Take off your shoes and socks. You only have to stand in the water up to your ankles. That's it. Stand up to your ankles. You have to face east. Put your hands in the air and yell out these words. You have to say them three times. You say L, L, L. And do it like a mantra. Like this. L, L, L. Kidosh, kidosh, kidosh. Hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny. Now that's Hebrew. Okay, you, let me say it one more time. You, you have to say it three times. Say L, 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 Kidosh, 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 Hey Nanny, Hey Nanny, Hey Nanny. Then, if you do it three times, then you ask for whatever you want. Now, you can't ask for yourself. You have to ask for whoever's sick, whoever needs help. You can't, if you ask for yourself, you won't make the connection. You have to, and what, do, what those words are. El is the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew word for God. It means God or power, okay? Kidosh, kidosh, kidosh means holy, holy, holy. And hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny, one word, hey, nanny, means 
take me, I'm here, I'm, I'm gonna help you out. That's what that means. So if you guys could go do that, just give it a shot. Because you might say, well, Gary, you're full of crap. You know, I don't believe any of this stuff. Well, just go down there and give it a try. Just give it a try and see what happens. And, and even though it says God, when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about a huge alien. And that's this is what the whole show is going to be about. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm going to try to prove it to you. And you can see all the proof on the stuff that John and I are going to disclose for you guys. Okay, John, that's all I wanted to say. Absolutely, man. And um, everybody... That a good opening? Yeah, that's a great opening. That's a really good <laughs> okay. opening. And I think you got people's attention with it. And I do want to thank Robert Scott for the super chat. Um, you guys can pay attention to the screen. I've got all the photos here that will be going along with uh, Gary's presentation. So, Gary, uh, you want to give a little bit of your background, just kind of get started? Uh, you, you mean just like where, who I am and where I came from? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, born, and raised, uh, born and raised in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, uh, back just that's, that's about 30 minutes south of Philadelphia. And um, uh, went to the University of Delaware, uh, moved out to um, California, Los Angeles, uh, back in the um, back in the mid seventies. Um, became got into real estate, did real estate. Also, it was lucky enough to sell a couple movie scripts, one to Lionsgate, one to, one to um, uh, Disney, and a couple other things. And uh, uh, then I came out to. Um, I came out to Phoenix in a place called Florence, Arizona, which is just a small place. And that's where all this stuff started to happen for me. So, um, uh, not to be, not to sound boring, but, (laughs) but that's pretty much 60 years in a, in in all in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, but then all the the fun stuff started to happen. Go ahead, John. Do you want to ask another question? Uh, no, man. I just uh, I just wanted to get a little background so people could kind of know you're just a, a regular guy, and out of nowhere, you know, you have this experience. Um, so, kind of, how did all of this, you know, begin with uh, the message and what it led into? Yeah, what happened was was um, uh, about four years ago, four and a half years ago, I had come up with an idea to restore uh, to, to, for world peace. It was for world peace. Mm-hmm. I, I said, well, no, I wonder how I can help world peace. And my idea was to restore the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. I thought, what a great way to bring the whole world together to, to, to um, crowdfund, globally crowdfund, the restoration of the Great Pyramid and Sphinx. Because they're falling apart, because mm-hmm. e- Egypt is a broke country. Yeah. So I thought we, we do a global crowdfunding, everybody pitches in, and I said, this is a great idea. And uh, so what I did was a couple of my um, movie buddies, they have, uh, they had, e- um, what's his name, uh, Sir Richard Branson and uh, Elon Musk email. Wow. So they gave it to me, because they loved the idea. And I figured I, I needed a couple billionaires to, to, for some startup money. Mm-hmm. So I emailed them, I told them the idea, and they emailed me back the next day and they said, Gary, we love this idea. How did you get our email? <laughs> well, you know, well, my buddy said to me, whatever you do, don't tell them where you got the email. So I didn't. And they said, Gary, you know, what is this idea? We love this idea. And I said, great. I, and I said, I need like $20 million startup money to get things going. And they said, well, we'll put money in, but you really have to Get, do a lot of homework first. You got to get a lot of things done before we put money into it. Mm-hmm. I said, I said, absolutely. I totally agree. So, so John, the next day, I uh, because I was real excited, yeah. I put the kind of put the cart before the horse, and I went to the NASA website, and I um, and I looked at a photo that was shot by the International Space Station, and uh, and I said, well, most of these photos that you look at on the website, you look at them and you just move on. And yeah. you gotta remember, they're taken by an astronaut in the International Space Station 200 miles above Earth. Mm-hmm. So when you see the photo, photo, you go, oh, that's great, that's Egypt and the pyramids, and you just move on. But I zoomed in on the Great Pyramid yeah. in order to find out where you could put men and machinery, you know, for the restoration type yeah. deal. Yeah. So what happens is, all of a sudden, I notice that it looks like shadows beside the Great Pyramid. When I say beside the Great Pyramid, they're, they're running east and west on the north side of the Great Pyramid. And, uh, and they're like in the sand there. And I said, boy, those look like clouds. But the closer I got to them, the more I zoomed in, they looked like, it looked like writing. So I said, oh my God, that looks like ancient Hebrew or something. So I wrote it down. I took a picture with my phone and I sent it to a few Judaic scholars, Aramaic scholars, Egyptologists. And I said, does it, do these words say anything? 
And two or three of them emailed me back a day later and they said, yeah, they say this. I said, oh my God. They go, where did you find it? And I said, I found it in a NASA photo. From The photo was shot in, um, on July 26, 2012. And they said, circle it and send it to us. So I did, I sent it to three of them. And they go, uh, they emailed me back and they said, you photoshopped this. And I, you really can't argue with them because you're just doing it online. And, and I said, I didn't. I said, go to the NASA website. And I gave them the, I sent them the link. I said, and look at it. I said, it's all right there. I didn't Photoshop anything. So two of them said, you're right. They emailed me back and said, you're right. I, we saw it on the, on the, um, on the NASA photo on the, on the NASA website. And uh, one guy down here at the University of Arizona, his name was Dr. Edward Wright. He said, Gary, he said, come down. I, I, wanna, I wanna meet you and I want you to show me this firsthand. I said, absolutely. So uh, we set up a time. The next week I went down and we uh, turned off all the lights. You know, John, you remember how I said you have to turn off the lights mm -hmm. and use a laptop computer? Yeah. And uh, so we did and he looks at it and he goes, Gary, I, I see it, but I'm not gonna believe it. I'm just not gonna believe it. And I said, well, why not? I said, what if this is a message from, from like aliens or from a God or both? And he goes, Gary, I, I can't have anything to do with this. So what I did was before I left, I said, well, Dr. Wright, I said, uh, here are some letters right here that I found that are actually written on the left side of a lamb a li in the photo, a lamb. And he looks at him and he, he, he um, translates them for me and it says, God and the Lord of the underworld. And he goes, Gary, how did, how did you know how to write this? I said, Dr. Wright, I didn't, I didn't Photoshop it. I said, so naturally before I left, I took him to the NASA website and he saw it and he goes, Gary, I still see it and I'm not gonna believe it. I'm just not gonna believe it. He goes, I can't have anything to do with this. So anyway, so go ahead. Did you have another question? No, man, uh, just continue. I'm showing on the screen um, the, the writing, the, the God and Lord of the underworld. And yeah, it looks, it, it looks like Elwell. E E L dot dot W with a little dot on top of it and E L, correct? Yes. But you got to remember in Hebrew you go from the right to the left. So the the big L on the right is God, and the the little L on the far left is Lord of the Underworld. Ah. But it's so funny to me that all those words God and the Lord of the Underworld are written in that little phrase, That's those insane. Hebrew letters. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's absolutely astonishing. It really it is. It's totally amazing. And when he saw the when he saw the letters written on the left side of a lamb, he said to me, he said, Gary, he said, you know, I've worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I said, yeah. I said, that's why I'm down here. And he goes, Gary, you know, a lot of this stuff that you're showing me is in the Dead Sea Scrolls that, that they don't, they, they haven't given to the public yet. And I said, well, I bet not because it would scare the hell out of people. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so, um, uh, so go ahead. Did you want to ask another question? Uh, no, just please continue. Well, anyway, so what happened was, was um, you know, and actually from the other shows, I told everybody how I went to all the different, I went to rabbis up here in Phoenix, and, mm -hmm. and I, I've, I've gone to... Um, I've gone to a bunch of uh, priests and ministers and stuff. Yeah. Well, when they see all this stuff, they most of them, they either, if they don't kick me out, they start crying or they get really angry. Wow. Because I've had two or three priests cry and they say, it's the end of the world. And I go, no, it's not the end of the world. I said, <laughs> this is a message about this being coming back. And when I say this being, mm -hmm. who I told you his name was L, you know, with mm -hmm. L, who's also known as Yahweh, who's also known as Hashem. Mm -hmm. He's the Hebrew God. He's the guy that with Abraham and Isaac and uh, and David and um, and uh, all the other you know biblical characters. But he's the main guy, and you can see his profile, his left profile, in the NASA photo from July 26, 2012. Can you pull that up on the screen for everybody? Absolutely, and this is one, I mean, I don't think that you can deny, if you look at this picture, you don't have to look hard at all, and you can see the giant alien. Yeah, in his the left profile, okay, but is it, do you have the one that I outlined in red there, John? Okay, yeah, I do. Can you find that one? Yep. There it is. Okay, cool. So, so that is the left. It almost looks like Nefertiti, who was Akhenaten's wife, mm -hmm. and she had the big, elongated skull going out of frame. And and right where his nose is is where the Great Pyramid is. It's like a little pointy nose, mm -hmm. and then you know it's his left profile. And you see his mouth and his round chin and his big, thick neck. And he's actually looking. He's looking east at like a squiggly cross. Can you see that, John? Yep. 
Yep. And everybody else sees it? Yep. Okay. And well, what that cross is, that cross is the Cygnus constellation. C-Y-G-N-U-S, Cygnus constellation. And, um, and that's where they're from, and that's why he's looking there. Now, you might say, well, Gary, how do you know that's the Cygnus constellation? Because what happened was when I saw the big alien head, uh, the left profile, and then I saw the cross, I'm going like, that cross has got to mean something. So what I did was I, ske- I drew it out on a piece of paper, and when you tilt, when you, and also the cross is actually made up of the Nile River, River running north and south and Ring Road, which is an eight-lane freeway running from Cairo back and stopping at the Giza Plateau. So that's, that's what's, that's, those are the two things that are making the cross. Mm-hmm. Now you might say, well, how's that possible? Well, because these aliens, that big alien, he designed it to look that way. This was all by design. Yeah. It wasn't a mistake. This was all by design. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. Because it's a message. That's the message. So what happened was, was if you till, if you if you download the photo from NASA, mm-hmm. and you you're in a dark room, and you tilt and and you you you, you tilt the um the photo the, the, the screen back towards your uh, like you lift under the computer and you lift it up so that the, the screen tilts back. What will happen is all the lights from Cairo will disappear except for about maybe 14 or 15. So what I did, and they all run along that cross. So what I did was I, I put the lights in, a, I, 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 I drew it, and I put the, the points of light, and then I sent it to a few astronomers. Well, the next day they, they emailed me back, and they said, Gary, that's the Cygnus constellation. So that's how I knew it was Cygnus. Yeah, you know what? Um what really makes this valid to me is because it's a Cygnus constellation. I know that uh, a lot of times uh, you hear in the Sumerian text um, about Nibiru and stuff, but anytime you look into Freemasonry or any type of uh, ancient culture, um, Cygnus is very, very, you know, uh, revered and highly associated. So right. that, that makes but a lot of it, sense. It's be also because um, uh, Cygnus, is also known as the Northern Cross or the Swan. Okay, mm-hmm. so a lot of people in in Egyptologist stuff they say that that um, the pyramids and the whole setup there in the on the Giza Plateau mimics Orion's Belt. Well, it doesn't. It mimics the Cygnus constellation, the, and and because that's where they're from, and mm-hmm. they showed up here to to start mankind and all that kind of good stuff. Now, everything I'm telling you guys. And I'm telling I'm, when I say you guys, I mean John and your audience. Mm-hmm. Is everything's in the NASA photo? Everything, everything's in the NASA photo. Yeah, you know, I mean, most of you just can't go to a um, to a scholars and and you have time to do meetings and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, or meet with NASA or yeah. to meet with SETI. Now, speaking of SETI, I met with I met with SETI at UCLA. Uh, can I bring this up now, John? Yes, is, absolutely. Is it a good time? Yeah, absolutely. It's no big deal. No big deal at all. Take your time, and um, I think it's really interesting for you to tell people, you know, all of the different professionals that you have kind of t- taken this to and their reactions. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, <clears throat> you know, this guy, I, there's a guy who runs SETI at UCLA, and he's he's a professor, and he's a sweet guy. He's really sweet. His name is Professor Jean Luc Margot. And he's from Belgium, okay? Mm-hmm. Young guy. He looked like he was about maybe 34, 35. Mm-hmm. I went there in November, okay? Now, I think it was November 10th or November 11th. And I was with him for about an hour, okay? So I show him the, the alien profile. I show him the, I show him the cross. I show, and, I tell, and he goes, well, it does look like Cygnus. And I said, yes. I said, now get ready for this. So I show him. Uh, and we're kind of, we're jumping far ahead here, John. But I show him a lot of things that are in the photo, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And he says to me, he says, Gary, I see him, but I'm not going to believe him. And he goes, because I can see millions of things in here. And I stopped him, and I said to him, I said, I said to him, Professor, here's the deal. I said, how long has SETI been in business? He, and he said, give or take 60 years. You know, the guy by the name of Carl Sagan started SETI. Yeah. You've heard of Carl Sagan? Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, Carl, so I said, I said, okay, Carl Sagan, 1963, 1964, whatever, he starts SETI. I said, it's been almost 60 years and you have no victories. You're O and sixty. <laughs> I said, and you, and I said, and all you want from people is them to give you money so you can build another satellite or receiver and try to receive messages from space. I said, that's what you want. And he goes, yeah. I said, and that's your only plan. 
Mm-hmm. I said, he goes, well, you know, we send up things. For, I said, listen, I said, I've had more success by driving in my truck a mile and a half down to a river, standing in the water and facing east and yelling up those words. I said, that's what I want you to do. He goes, I won't do that. And I said, yeah, but you're a scientist. I said, shouldn't scientists leave no stone unturned? Yeah. Shouldn't you be a scientist with no boundaries? Right. I said, how can you want people to give you money when you won't even go to a river or to a lake, stand in the water for an hour or for a half hour and just yell these words up? I said, what if it works? Well, it won't work. I said, how the hell do you know it won't work? <laughs> I, said, I said, how can you be so sure? You know why it, why it is? Because they're stuck with their heads in books in the third dimension. They mm-hmm. don't think outside those books or what other people have taught them. Most Absolutely. academics, if it's not in a book or a piece of papyrus or written on a, or written on a, on a pyramid, they're not going to believe it. That's right. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. And I said to him, I, I said to him, I said, Dr. Mark, I mean, I'm sorry, Professor Margo, I said, uh, I said, listen, man, I said, you are 0 and 60. He was, Gary, this is really starting to get, you're get being insulting. I said, well, you should be insulted. I said, you're asking people to give you money to build things that you haven't, you haven't had one, one response, one. I said, all I'm asking you to do is go stand in some water. Mm-hmm. He, and he, he kept arguing with me. I said, listen, man, I better get going. You know, so, yeah. so, you know, it's like, so that's the kind of mind that you're dealing with yeah. in acad- what's called academia, where it's like, it, like for instance, the guy, same thing with the guy down, this, this, the guy down at the University of Arizona. Dr. Edward Wright, he said the same thing. He said, well, Gary, you know, I have a reputation. In the... I said, a reputation? I said, I've never heard of you. I said, what's the big deal? This is a message from alien slash God. I said, it has the whole, there's, there's like a whole, do you know what the Torah is, um, yes. John? Yes. Okay, it's a, if, for your listeners, it's the Jewish Bible, the five books of Moses. And I said to him, I said, I said, you have a reputation. I said, the five books of Moses is written in this photo. It had to have been done and put there by aliens slash technologically advanced millions of years ahead of us because it's in there. Mm-hmm. And I said, and you help me, you help me translate some of it. I said, so how can you say you don't have time or it's not worth your time? He goes, well, I have 10,000 students. I said, so what? I said, there's 7.2 billion people on the planet. Mm-hmm. Take a leap of faith here and jump in here with me. And he yeah. wouldn't do it. So <laughs> yeah. I know brother i'm telling you it's crazy but anyway but it's really annoying and and i know that sometimes i can be a little pushy and i realize i've been looking at this thing for almost five years now so Mm -hmm. i'm used to it but here's now here's one good sign okay so after i met with him and i met and i met with the guy the guy at the university of arizona uh, in november after i met with uh dr margot i'm sorry professor margot over Mm -hmm. at ucla Mm -hmm. city i went to a guy by the name of Jan Harzan, who is the, he's the executive director of MUFON, which stands for Mutual UFO Network. Yes. Have you ever, you've heard of that, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now you got to remember, you might say, well, Gary, how did you get these meetings? So, like, how did you just go in and, like, you know, sit down in their office and get them? Well, I told them I was going to make a donation. Mm-hmm. Okay? So as soon as you say that, the doors are wide open. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my donation was my information. They didn't realize that until the end of this. <laughs> so anyway, so dude, sometimes you got to be a little, you know, Archimedean mm-hmm. to, uh, anyway, so anyway, so what happens is, is I go down to, I, I, I had been in Los Angeles and I drive down to Irvine, California. Can you, is our connection okay, John? Yes, yes, I think so. So I go down to uh, Irvine, California, and that's the, the, the main headquarters of MUFON. Mutual UFO Network. Yes. There's Dan Harzan. Hey, Gary shakes my hand. Come on in. I said, hey, Jim, we got to make the room real dark. I'm going to bring up my laptop. He goes, sounds great. The guy was awesome. I show him this stuff. His teeth fall out of his mouth. It just, <laughs> his, his jaw hits the floor. He goes, oh, my God, Gary, I see everything. I said, yeah. I said, it's insane, right? He said, Gary, I, you know, what do you want from me? And I said, well, I'd love for you to send this photo and everything about it to all your, all your members throughout the United States, which are approximately 4,000. Yeah. He said, you know what, Gary, I will, blah, blah, blah. So let me just say this, Jan Harzan was a great guy. So, and, uh, but he has an open mind. He's not an academic. Yeah. He do, you know what I mean? He doesn't think he has a reputation that he has to uphold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's so, no so ego Jan there. Was, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, there's just, you know, I think people's ego will keep them a lot of times from 
you know, opening up to this kind of thing. They they don't want to, you know, put their job at risk or... That's it. And yeah. mostly it's that. You know, well, I have a wife. I have a kid. I have a family. Well, there's 7.2 billion people on the planet that should know this stuff. And you're, you know, you're, and, and you're a big wimp yeah. that you won't even, like, give it a shot or even take take a closer look. Oh, no, I, you know, I'm a professor or I'm, or I'm, a, I'm a scholar. Good for you. Yeah. You're an idiot. Yeah. So, so, yeah. No. So, so anyway, man, but, but, um, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just wanted to get that out that, oh, and also I want to tell your listeners that I was in Egypt and Jerusalem for the month of May of 2019. Wow. And it, it all has to do with the photos. And I had a stand in the Nile river and I had a stand in, uh, in, in Jerusalem at the, at the temple Mount. And I had to say certain words because certain things were supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so just know that I have put my time in, and I and I've hit all these people, and I, dude, I just I don't stop. So, wow, yeah, and you know what? I I see uh, a few people in the chat that are you know talking about being open minded and stuff, and then some that are not so with it. Let me just say this before we go any further. Um, the one of the reasons that I had Gary on is I heard his story about a year and a half ago, and I tried what he's saying. And I seen a UFO uncloak itself in the sky and then kind of fade back off into the distance. So, and John, when you say that, you've got to tell your listeners you, that you stood in water. You faced I did. East and I did. I stood in. I stood in water. I faced east, and I said those words. And I, I you know, what I did. I fully didn't expect anything to happen. I was just doing it to see what would happen. To be honest, it was the first time I heard your story. And that ever since, that's why I, I'm like, I got to get this guy on. And I ran into your contact <laughs> information uh, a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, there he is. There he is. So, uh, yeah, I seen a UFO. It, it was translucent glass looking. It had lights around it. It uncloaked in the sky just to, like, show me, I guess, and then disappeared. <gasps> it was the wildest thing, man. It was, it was wild. You, all these people are people who are skeptic. I totally understand. Believe me, guys, it blew me away when when this was happening. But I don't sell books, I don't sell DVDs, I don't sell anything, and uh, I'm just here to give you all this information for free. Doesn't mm-hmm. cost anything. And also, uh, like John was saying, if don't be skeptical yet. Go down to the water, do what, what I'm saying, and then if nothing happens, email and say, hey, Gary, you're full of crap, nothing happened for me. But give it a shot. It won't kill you. It, I promise you it won't kill you unless you slip in the water and you drown. And I can't be responsible for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely. Well, I think people just need to, you know, to, to be open-minded. You're not – and if – you know, if the the words are, are calling to God, so I mean, you're not summoning a demon or anything like that. You're you're literally, you know, calling to God. God is El. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, that's the original ancient Hebrew. Now, if you believe uh, God is Jesus and stuff, um, it, I never yelled out Jesus, but you could give it a shot. Uh, but I, in my opinion, you should say El. Mm-hmm. El was the ancient Hebrew God, and and he still is. He's the guy, the left pro- profile. In the NASA photo, that's him. That's L. And so uh, I would say do that, especially if you're asking to help someone get healed of cancer or, or to help someone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and also here's another thing too. Nikola Tesla. Everybody knows Nikola Tesla. Yeah. was a genius. Yeah. He always said to unlock the answers to the universe. What you need is that you need energy, vibration, and frequency. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, energy is when you're standing barefoot on the earth in water. Okay, mm-hmm. because water is is is, is a conduit to, to the next plane. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you stand in that water and you yell out, that's vibration in the water. The frequency is your voice, the, the tone or pitch of your voice. That's your frequency. Mm-hmm. Those three things will unlock it. It will unlock it. And believe me, you guys will see everything in the NASA photo, and you'll understand that number one, they're coming back, and they're coming back very very soon. And uh, and the people. Uh, it, it's just they will know if you were the ones who stood in the water. They will know because the way they measure a human being is by the vibration that comes off your soul. It can show like it's almost like everything you've done in your life is a vibration that has been put on your soul. Mm-hmm. This, this being and beings that work with him can read your souls and they can read everything you did in your life. So they will know if you stood in that water or not. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I know it's wild. I, I I believe that these these entities have played a major role um, throughout the entirety of humanity. Uh, um, you know, absolutely. that just that's my my personal opinion, and I do believe well, that the prophecies. Well, that's right. And it's I talk correct. about this on the show all the time. The different prophecies, uh, especially of this particular time that I believe we're in. I think that you're 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 right on point, and you're probably giving people a heads up of some things to come. So. Well, you know, there's there's another thing too. Um, uh, uh, in the Cygnus constellation, in the month of July, there's going to be a supernova. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and and you can actually Google K as in kid, I C as in cat, K I as in you know, I M, K I C dash nine eight three two 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 seven. That's kick K I C dash nine eight three. Two 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 seven. That is, and you, you'll read about it. You'll read about it because it's been written up for the last year and a half or two years. Two scientists have found this that there's going to be a supernova in the in the Cygnus constellation, and from Earth with your naked eye, you're going to be able to see that the sky is going to turn red in a certain part of the sky, and you'll be able to see it. That is their calling card. They in the month of July 2022, actually July 26. They're going to return to Jerusalem. So, uh, and when I say return, they're not re they're returning to Jerusalem, but actually they're just revealing themselves. Guys, they're already here. They're in Egypt, and uh, and it's all in the NASA photo. So that's why I had to go to Egypt and say certain words. Uh, like I said, down at the Nile, uh, over at the Great Pyramid, and actually at another spot just north of the Great Pyramid, about five miles. So yeah, wow. it's all happening. Yeah, wow. I know it's great. I, I'm extremely excited, but uh, John, I, I didn't lose you. Did I? No, I'm right here. What happened was, was that you know, guys, if you ever met me and you come down to Florence, and you're more than welcome to, um, I take people over to the fire department, and they have a community room, and I show people uh, exactly how to see everything and how to. to so, so when you go home, you can show all your friends, and also down here, uh, there's there's the um, the Gila River. Mm -hmm. um, from the Gila Indians that, that lived in this area. And that's, I take the people down there and they stand in the water or we go to a, um, a butte, which is a, which is a hill that has a flat top. And there's actually a, a, um, a pyramid on top of this butte. And, um, and we say the words, we say the words mm -hmm. and, uh, and, um, what was my point? Um, oh yes. But what happens is, is some people get really frightened. I think it really frightened. And I totally understand. I totally understand. But just know this. Uh, these things, these, this being and, and all the beings with him created us. They created us. And, uh, and they're not going to hurt us. It's not, it's not going to be Armageddon or anything like that. I guarantee you. The only thing is it's going to be really, really scary. Because when they just show up, that's why they sent this thing, this message on July 26, 2012. Now, if you remember 2012, yeah. um, 2012 is the, the, the Mayan calendar ended in December 21st of 2012. So they were only five months off. Yeah. So, so there you go. And uh, believe me too, people have said to me, Gary, well, have you found a comparison between Egypt and, um, and the uh, sun and moon pyramid uh, just south of, or just west, east of Mexico City. Well, yes, I have. Certainly, I have. There's the same writing that is um, that is in the the NASA photo and uh, by the Great Pyramid. It's by the Sun and Moon Pyramid. So yes, they're all connected. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and you know what? The same date that that photo uh, was on NASA's site isn't that the same date, but just ten years earlier that this star will actually explode. It's, it's actually uh, 10 years, not earlier, 10 years in the future. So yeah. it's 2012, 2022. Yeah, that's so wild. So 10 years later. Yeah, that's wild. That's really wild. So it's literally 10, well, years, yeah. 10 years later to the date. Um, well, not, I don't know if it's to the day, but I'm not saying to the day, but they predicted, uh, the scientists predicted it would be anywhere between May and July mm. that it would be. So I'm saying it's going to explode. You're going to be able to see the red sky. And then on July 26, 2022, these, you're, you're going to be able to see these guys. But you can see them already in the NASA photo. You can see all of them. Wow. Wow. But you, you see the picture I drew of... Um, uh, the the pencil of the, of the big alien with the big head. Yes. That's, you see that, right? Yes, we're showing it right now. Yeah, that's him. 
That's him. And he's in the photo in three different places. He's in the photo in three different places. And the way I have him drawn there, can you see where it almost looks like there's fire coming out of his hand? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's not, that's not fire. What it is is, in the photo, it shows that there are souls coming from the Great Pyramid mm -hmm. down through the earth up into his right hand, and then it goes through his body out his left hand, and the souls are being put into apes. What? And yes, and then the apes, the apes, you can, now, like I said, if you were sitting here with me, John, I could show it to you. Mm -hmm. The apes then are starting to go from, th from, from apes to human beings, and it looks extremely painful. Like they're screaming and stuff, like their mouths are wide open, it's extremely painful. So, and not only that, but in the, in the photo, it shows that not only is he doing that with souls, but then th there's alien DNA and water being put into the apes too, in order to make them human. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I know it's all in the photo. It's all in the photo, and I showed it. To, I've shown it to many, many people, and uh, it just it terrifies them. So but back to what I was saying, like when I was showing people down here at the fire department, mm -hmm. at the community room. Mm -hmm. Well, during Thanksgiving, I, I was having Thanksgiving with some friends, and one of them was a was really like into the Bible and stuff, and yeah. and another one said, "Hey, Gary, show uh, show Jim, uh, you know, the Garden of Eden." And I said, "Okay." I show it to him. Oh my God, he freaked, man. He freaked it. Because a lot of people do, though. They freak out. Like I said, ministers and priests here in Florence, they, they just say, you got to leave. You got to leave. I, I didn't see this. I said, hey, you can't unsee it, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, it's the Garden of Eden. This is happening. He goes, well, I'm not going to tell my, 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 uh, my flock or my, my, what do they call it, parishioners? And he goes, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to tell my people. I, I'm going to keep this to myself. And I said, that's a big mistake, pal. I said, because when you die and your soul goes up to these things, I said, they're going to read those, 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 uh, those uh, vibrations that you didn't show your people. Mm -hmm. And they're going to know you're a jerk. Yeah. So he goes, I don't care. I, I, I didn't see that. And then you have to leave. So. Wow. That's what I've had to deal with, John. Yeah, it's been well, I mean, you look at the, the religious system and, you know, yeah, it's, it. it's upside down anyway. So um, that's probably the wrong tree to be barking up, I think, with a lot well, of... It, it, it is, but it's so cool to watch. Um, see, the thing is, is that like a lot of people have beliefs. They believe you know this or they believe that. Mm -hmm. But once you really see it, you go, wait a minute, how did that get there? Wait a minute, this this is this is this doesn't fit in my box. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really fun though to see that. But then I feel like, oh my God, I, I really kind of like one one priest said, Gary, he's like in his fifties, he said, Forty years of my life, you've just wrecked forty years of my life and I said, Why? I said, Are you not a nice person? He goes, No, I'm a nice person. I said, Buddy, this is all you have to do. If you've been good to people and you treated people the way you wanted to be treated, mm -hmm. you know, like the golden rule, yeah. that's it. I said, that's all you have to do. Treat people the way you want them to be treated. You don't have to belong to any church or any club. And the Jews, yes, the Jews are the chosen people, but they're no better than the Christians or the, or, or the Muslims. Just if you're a nice person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, and I, I agree with that myself. I think that it's yeah, all about... What the heck? What, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's... It doesn't matter your religion. It matters what kind of person you are. And how. Totally, man. And the thing, yeah, yeah, believe me, just because you go to church, well, if you go to church every Sunday and you're a jerk uh, every, all week long, you're not going anywhere good. Trust me. <laughs> you, you, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. But, but, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, but, but this whole message and everything, and them coming back, it's about mankind's evolution. What they're going to do, it, it, and I didn't tell you this, but when I first went down to the river, I uh, well, not the first, but maybe after about a year, I had a buddy come down, and I said, hey, fill me with your phone, because I want to see if anything's around me in the water. Mm -hmm. So I said my piece, and I yelled up, I said, hey, guys, it's Gary Parker, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, we went home, and I, we looked at his phone, and you could see this kind of like green thing coming from the water, and it comes up my leg, and, it, and it's a woman. It's a woman, and she's all green, and she kind of has like a... Uh, uh, kind of an elongated skull, and she kind of like um, uh, like melts into my body, and it's really weird. It's really wow. weird. And I thought, oh my god, this is so cool. 
So, um, so what I think is, and, and I don't know for sure, but I think when they come back, what they would do is this, just like they did with the, with the apes of ancient time. They'll give each one of us an extra soul, maybe a little bit of alien DNA, I don't know, mm-hmm. and hopefully it won't be too painful, but we will be able to see other dimensions and see what they see, and we will move on from this third dimensional world and from, from this kind of like our, our human look and maybe be a little more... Uh, alien or something you know, yeah. I, 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 but I think our brains are going to expand and I, I, I really think that uh, it's going to be a, the next step in, in evolution kind of like a, a, a consciousness graduation uh, an elevation that's a better way to put it I like that that's yeah. good consciousness graduation yeah very good but yeah man and I'm excited about it I really am but uh, because you know, if you the thing is is, is, is uh, it shows in the photo that there are that that this, this, it's almost like a ship that they that they that they're in. When I say a ship, it's not metal or anything, but it's it's almost like a multi-dimensional space or or um, or almost like a like a plane. Uh-huh. And all these different things are are all different dimensions are inside this one plane. And what they do is it's all run by trillions and trillions of souls, not just from Earth, but from all the other planets that they've seen it and that they're other uh, other other beings because in the photo there's a ton of aliens like a ton the only thing is i've never seen a gray alien in there uh, mm. other than that i've seen and i haven't seen a reptilian one they all kind of look they have like three different faces one's human mm. one's kind of like almost like a like a like a uh, like a lion or a mm. werewolf uh i'm telling you guys it's if, if if you took your time and you looked at the photo you would see it but um, I think what they do is this, is, is they, they use souls as energy to move throughout the universe, uh, throughout all the universes and all the stars to all the different planets. And what they do is, is it's almost like adding octane, higher octane to gasoline. Mm-hmm. What they do is they go back and they, they interact with us again so we, our souls become brighter and brighter and more power. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And then what they do is, is it's all about reincarnation. And uh, so think think that, like, a lot of people have said to me, they go, no, when you die, you die. And I said, do you really think that all your experiences here on Earth and all the good times and all the bad times, that how could they be lost? That would be such a loss. What they do is they keep compounding them constantly, and th- that and hopefully the good outweighs the bad mm-hmm. and, and they just keep reusing them to, to um, evolve other species and other races of the of the other planets that they uh, that they manage. Wow, wow. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I hope I do. I sound coherent. Seriously. Yes. No. Absolutely. I, sometimes and, I, I think I sound like a moron. No. 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 Absolutely. And um, I already know that uh, my particular audience they. Uh, I'm sure they have their own different ideas about what this is, but I know they understand. I got a very, very bright audience, so you're doing okay, awesome. Just, but guys, just know this, everybody: when you die, you do not get to go live with Jesus. That is not going to happen. That does not happen. When you die, you move on to another plane, and you move on to a whole other existence. You are reincarnated. That's what all this is about. Absolutely. Yeah, I've actually had friends of mine go, yeah, when I die, I get to go live with Jesus. That makes no sense to me. But, uh, but hey, you know what? Jesus is in here. Yeah. He's in three places. He's a big, 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 big deal. Mm-hmm. Is he a God? No, not in the photo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, is he on a cross? Yes. Yeah. Did he die? Part of him did. Not all of him. Just part of him. Uh, the part that they needed in a certain area. So, <laughs> so yeah. but he is a big deal, and he was a great guy. But he was married, and, and he had two kids and a bunch of grandchildren. Wow. So go ahead. Wow. They're no, uh, I've seen, They're I've, I've seen some of these things in the photo that you're talking about. I've seen like a a big giant meteor, uh, with with the monkeys. I seen uh, Jesus on a cross. I seen uh, quite a few things. Uh, the I think it was Uriel or Gabriel, one of the angels. Yes, Uriel. Uriel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's on the east side of the garden. Yes. Yeah, it's a it's really crazy. So people really should just look at it. If anything, I seen the serpent. Um, Good. Good. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you find the serpent, you can find everything else. Because what you do is from the serpent, uh, and actually he's hovering above water or a river. And there's white rapids just below him. But what happens is oh, everything goes east. So to the left is east. So everything left 
of the serpent, you'll see, what you'll see is you'll see, there's a bunch of things, but the main things are, you'll see the tree of life, her name is Asherah. Mm -hmm. You'll see that, that her trunk has a, she has a left profile of a woman, she's very pretty. Next to that is, is, is uh, right, sitting right next to the tree, on the and the tree is right on the bank of the river. Sitting right next to her is the big alien, L. In his left hand is the, um, is the lamb, and written on the lamb is God and the Lord of the underworld. Mm. Right ne on his right hand side are two elephants drinking from the water. Above the elephants, just above the elephants, is a flaming sword. Okay, mm -hmm. and then right below the flaming sword is the tree of knowledge with the two little pieces of fruit. Okay, and then, so so it's all there. And if you guys ever want to come out to Florence, meet with me. I can take you right over to the Florence Fire Station and uh, show it to you. I've done it with hundreds of people. Wow. So uh, and that's uh, this is my job. You know, this is my uh, what I'm supposed to do to show everybody. Also, as you go to the far east side of the Garden of Eden, it's Uriel. Uriel's there, and Uriel is a cherubim. He has four faces. One's a, uh, one is a, uh, on his left side is a lion. On his right side, he's a raven. He's not an eagle. He's a raven. And, uh, and he also looks like an ogre, and then he has a human face. So, and he's the guardian. And if you guys know anything about Genesis, he was put there, and so was the, the flaming sword, so um, Adam and Eve could not get back into the garden and eat from the tree of life or they would have become immortal absolutely absolutely wow wow i think uh awesome. i think people should at least give it a chance and at least look yeah, at it give it a look let me just say this too if you really look at it and you and you start to see these things that i'm telling you guys you'll see three things the other thing too in uh, l or or abba or god or hashem or yahweh he's sitting on the bank and his right his left foot is in the water his right foot is on the bank, okay? And he's gigantic. I mean, he's bigger than the he's bigger than the elephants. But in the water, halfway in the water, lying in his lap, her her, her waist is in the water, but she's lying on on El's lap. Is Eve? Adam is just behind her. He's still halfway in the water. He has his right and left hand on El or God's right knee. Okay, so you might be able to figure it out if if you met with me, I could show it to you. Mm -hmm. But um, also, here's the other thing, too. The light, remember I said there was a flaming sword just above the elephants? Yes. Yeah, okay. The flaming sword, if you look close, and it is, believe me, if you tilt the screen, oh, can we also tell people that if they go to um, How to See God, the Garden of Eden, and the Third Temple, uh, if you go to that on YouTube, can, can, can you tell your listeners about that? They can watch my video, and I'm explaining how to see everything. Yes, absolutely. I've got the, the video here. Um, let me... Yeah, if they want to come to your spot and, you know, so if you can announce... Because, guys, I, I made... And it's really bad production value. I did it myself. So, uh, but you, you'll be able to see how to use your laptop to see all this stuff. But just know this. There's the light... Or, I'm sorry, the the flaming sword is shining light on 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 L or, or, uh, or God... What's written it, it, on three things? It's, sh it's shining light on God. It's shining light on what's written on the Lamb, and it's also shining light on the Tree of Life. Okay, but if you look at that flaming sword very closely, you will see that it's Jesus's face. On the, one part, he looks human. His other part is on fire. So he is the light, shining light on those three things: onto God, onto what's written on the Lamb, and the Tree of Life. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know, man. Am I being too detailed? No, 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 not at all. And um, I will have uh, the link to the video and the oh, NASA good. photo in the description and for everybody to go uh, check out after the show. So, and I'm showing and you. It. You know, the other thing, too, John, is that, like, your, your, your fans, I've actually had one guy say to me, well, you're going off the rails. You're, 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 you just sound like totally crazy. Well, here's the deal, guys. All this stuff is alien technology. There's there's no boundaries here. We're third dimensional creatures. These are fifth dimensional creatures. They can do anything. I mean, not anything, but pretty much anything more than we can do. And that's why we consider them gods because they they are amazing. They can do a lot more things than we can. So what I'm saying is, is even though it sounds completely crazy, please look at the video, try it out on your laptop computer, and uh, also. Sometimes if you make the photo, if you shrink the photo down, you zoom, uh, you zoom out, 
zoom out and you use a magnifying glass, it's even clearer. So believe me, I've been doing it for almost five years, so I, I can see everything. And uh, people say to me, well, I can see this, this, and this. And I said, yeah, but I show them the serpent, I show them the tree of life, I show them the flaming sword, I show them the elephants, and I show them Uriel, and they all see it. And I said, why is that there? Like, even if you think you see so many other things, Mm -hmm. they see those four or five main things, and they say, you know, you're right, Gary, it looks like a painting. I, I said, absolutely. So, anyway. Go ahead, John. I'm getting tired. Of, I hope I'm not boring. No, no, not at all. Um, right. Now, uh, I, I did kind of want to, I don't know if you're ready to go into this yet, but didn't you have, like, uh, uh, okay, contact with these beings as well? Yes, I did, yeah. How did that, now, like, yeah. how did that begin? Well, you, like I said, you got, your audience has to know that I've been doing this for almost five years. Mm-hmm. So, when I was into it for about two, two and a half years, okay. I, I, first of all, I saw a lot of things. And, and every night I look at it, every night I look at the photo, I see more and more. Because it's infinite. It's infinite what, what, what's in here. The whole history of mankind is in here. So, but what happens is, is I kept, I, I would go down to the river maybe once a week. Mm-hmm. And I would yell up, the, I'd yell up the Hebrew stuff first. And then I'd say, hey, and I'm, just like I'm talking to you, John, I go, hey, I say, guys, I need, you gotta throw me a bone here. I, you got, you got, I, you gotta let me know more because people are just, they're thinking, they're not believing me. Nothing's going, you know, I, I, I was kind of whining. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I was whining. Mm-hmm. And I was being a big baby. And, <laughs> uh, so, see, I was, I was because I thought, you know, come on, man. If, if I'm a messenger here, yeah. you gotta give me something I can hand out to people that they'll see and that, that maybe something even, spe- like, I really wanted to see if I could get somebody like healed down at the river because there, it has to do with water. And I was hoping somebody here in Florence had not, I wasn't hoping they'd have cancer. Yeah. Right? So I was hoping that they'd say, hey, yeah, I'll give it a shot. But no, none of them would. They were all too afraid. They were yeah. all too afraid. They said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I said, yeah, but you're dying of cancer. What's more scary? That's right. <laughs> so they'd rather go to the hospital and have chemotherapy, which I totally agree with. I totally agree with. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I mean, I'm all for medical science, without a doubt. But I said, well, how hard can it be? You stand in the water and you yell up some words, and where do these things help you? Oh, I don't want to do that. That's just too scary. So anyway, so, but what, no, oh yeah, so, so back to your question. So yes, I went down to the river. Um, uh, it was 2000 and, oh, 15, 2017, July 26, same date. Went down, stood in the water, and because I had been whining and complaining for so long. Also, guys, I, I told was telling John that that there's a mountain over here, and it's actually a butte. And, and I think I may have mentioned it earlier. And uh, and the whole shape of the butte. Now a butte, b u t t e. Is a um, is is a is a uh, a hill that's in the middle of nowhere. Like there's just a hill and a bunch of land around it, mm-hmm. and the hill has a flat surface. Well, on the top of this hill is a um, is a pyramid, and the pyramid was built in 1925 for a guy named Charles Poston, who was the father of Arizona. They did it in his honor because he always wanted. He bought the butte back in 1889 or something, and all his friends after he died, they wanted to. He always wanted a pyramid up there, so they put a pyramid up there. But guys, the whole butte is in the shape of that alien's head. Like the whole outline of his head and his face are that butte. And in every direction you can see it. John, I swear to you, John, it's called it's called Poston's Butte. P O S T O N B U T T E. Google it and you'll see it has the, and if you can see it all in different directions and on a satellite image, you will see that um, that not only is it his face, but in the satellite image there's some ancient Hebrew written on the top. Okay, let's see if we can find that here. It's Poston, Poston, Poston's Butte, and his name was Charles Poston. And he was, and like I said, he was the uh, father of Arizona. He, he made it a territory. As a matter of fact, uh, Abraham Lincoln funded it. And I think it was 1863, I think. I got some pictures up here, Poston's Butte with a, it's got a pyramid on it for sure. Yeah, there's a pyramid up there. It's pretty big. And he's, and, and Charles Poston's buried under it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm telling you, see what happens is is this: if you if you draw a, a straight line from going east, uh, wait a minute, east going west, the from the Great Pyramid, it will hit Waco, Texas, and it will hit Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Mm-hmm. The the 
the um, the Vatican, mm-hmm. the Vatican in Rome. They built uh, the, there's there's a place right there in uh, in the hills of uh, of uh, Tucson. There's a place called Mount Graham. Well, Mount Graham, the Vatican had built a giant observatory in 1984. It's giant. Okay, why would the why would the Vatican build an observatory on that ley line, you know, from the Great Pyramid? Why would they do it in Tucson? Come on, right? Yeah. Well, what happens is, is out here in um, in Florence, five miles south of Florence, is a giant, a giant um, monastery built by the Greek Orthodox. Okay, the Greek Orthodox Church built a huge monastery out mm-hmm. here. Why would they build that? So what I did is naturally because I found all this stuff at Poston's Butte and everything. I met with the main the, the main monk or the main father over there at the at the Greek Orthodox Church, and they said, and I asked him, why did you guys build this here? And he said, Gary, we believe God is going to return to Florence, Arizona, before he goes to Jerusalem. And I said, well, that's interesting. And when I showed him everything, yeah, he said. He goes, Gary, no, this is impossible. And I said, well, I said, I know you guys think Jesus has got it, but this is his dad, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And they freaked out. They freaked and asked me to leave. Then I met with the Jesuits down in Tucson, okay? Mm -hmm. The Jesuits. Yeah. The Jesuits run Mount Graham. Yeah. And I said to them, I said, uh, you know, Mount Graham, their, their observatory there from the Vatican, I said, why did you guys build that observatory there? And they said, because we believe that God is going to return to America Southwest before he goes to Jerusalem. And I said, well, let me show you something. I showed it to them. They said, we're not going to believe that. I said, are you not going to believe it because he doesn't have Jesus' face? And they go, well, yeah, pretty much. And I said, well, that's ridiculous, guys. Mm-hmm. I said, do you really think someone who created us is going to look like us? I said, they're millions and millions of years more advanced than us. Mm-hmm. They said, Gary, we can't have anything to do with this. Well, get this, guys. What happens is, is when the... Um, the ley line from the Great Pyramid, it actually goes, it runs over the Gila River mm-hmm. that runs through Arizona and the one that I stood in. So that was my connection. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, and also, and, and also I, showed the, I showed a couple of the monks from the Greek Orthodox Church, I showed them the post in Butte. I said, guys, that's, that's El, that's Abba, that's Yahweh, that's Hashem. And, he, and they go, no, we're not going to believe it. And I said, okay. Well, because they're stuck in that box that I'm talking about. That yeah. three-dimensional, you know, we believe God's a human being box, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, yeah. Just know this, but just know this, in the past five years, I've put in five years' worth of work into this stuff, so I'm not making it up. No, absolutely, absolutely. And um, throughout while you've been talking, I've been showing clips from uh, the video, that way they could see the serpent and things Excellent. like that. Um, Poston's Butte, just trying to back up a lot of the information you're saying here so people can see. I just think it's really, really fascinating, and I think that people... Well, and, well, and make sure you tell them too, John, and if you guys can hear me out there, this doesn't cost you a cent. Yeah. Gary Parker's giving you this all for free. I'm not asking you to buy one book, one DVD. It's all free, and I'm putting all my own time into it, and I don't care what it takes. I'm going to shove it down your guys' throats, because when this thing shows up, you're going to say, oh, I'm not that afraid now, because I saw it, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a little afraid, because even me, I'll be a little nervous. Yeah. But I'm hoping I get a front row seat in Jerusalem. Uh, but Because uh, when I was in Jerusalem, oh man, the rabbis hated me. But all I'm telling you is, <laughs> yes, it's going to be scary, but it's our next step. Because we're not going to keep, our lives can't keep uh, going the way they've been going with all these wars and people famine and people dying. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so 1930, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's time to move on from that. It, it, there's too much human suffering, my God. That's right. Anyway. That's you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think that we, um, we're we seeing a, a change in, um, in humanity. Even though you see a lot of evil, you're also seeing a lot of people going in the other direction as well. So Now, but, I, I agree with you, John. And, and th- th- let's, let me just tell you and your listeners, there are a lot more. It's set, with 7.2 billion people, there are a lot more people that are good than, than they are bad. And there's people who care about each other, and there's people that love each other. And you see it all the time. It's just, whatever you look at the news, they always want to talk about the bad stuff. You know right. what I mean? Right. And, but there is a lot of good stuff going on, and a lot of, a lot of great stuff is, is, is happening. Now, 
as far as bad spirits and bad stuff like that go, in the photo, guys, and, now if, and I also told this to every religious person I met. I said, if you really want to know what's going to happen, you have to read the Torah, which is the Jewish Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, It's called eschatology, which means end times. Mm-hmm. Eschatology is what's going to happen at the end. Read the Torah and read a thing called the Book of Enoch. Or listen to it on, on, online. Let me just say this. If I had to read all these books. Yeah. So what happened was, when I read Enoch, and I found the Garden of Eden in the NASA photo, mm-hmm. every, exactly where Enoch said everything was, everything is. Wow. Enoch was right on the money. He was right, so he went up and he came back and he told his family, so whoever wrote the books wrote the books, he was telling the truth. It, the book of Enoch did not make it into the, into the, the canon for the, for the Catholic, uh, yeah. Uh, Catholicism, it didn't matter, or the Bible, whatever. Yeah. But everything he says, now guys, in the photo, when he, it, this is all in the photo, when Enoch talks about these things called the Nephilim, N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M, do you know what those are? Yes, huh? the fallen ones. Exactly. Okay, they're all in the photo. Now you might think there's only 200 of them. No, no. There's hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands of them. They were on Earth for over 2,000 years. They had a bunch of families. Now, all these things, a lot of them were evil, a lot of them were giant. Like I said, this is in the photo. And you, and, and in Enoch, he says that the Nephilim are actually below hell. In the photos, they're below hell. They're below hell. Mm-hmm. And hell starts right, at, right where the serpent is. Now, the serpent in the Garden of Eden is a good thing because he's a filtering system and he goes... Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with that, but... Just know this, he's a good thing. But below him is hell, okay? Mm-hmm. Below hell are the Nephilim, and there's hundreds of thousands of them, okay? Now what happens is, is this. When, and, and like I said, this is in the photo. This mm-hmm. is totally in the photo. Uh, and if you, came, if you come out to Florence, I'll show it to you. In the photo, because a lot of people go, well, there's good and evil spirits, and people go, well, I don't believe that. Well, there are, okay? Yeah. But what happens is, is this. The Nephilim, who were all drowned, when they were drowned, yes, their flesh and blood bodies died, but their souls did not die. Now, they didn't have one or two souls. They had like five or six souls. And those souls can move around Earth. Not all of them, but some of them. Because even though the fallen ones were from the fifth dimension, mm-hmm. when they came down here and they had sex with humans, all of a sudden their offspring which I could actually call the Nephilim. The yeah. fallen ones, their, their, their children, everything were called the Nephilim. Yeah. What happens is, is their souls had human and alien souls together. Those souls are what leak into our third dimension and mm-hmm. actually screw with people and actually cause a lot of problems like wars and holocaust and they, they, they actually help promote that. Now you might say, well, why do they want that? Why would they want that? Well, because they hate El. They hate God. They hate him because he killed not only hundreds of thousands of them, maybe even millions, but he killed their families. In the photo, you, you can see children, and they're all drowning. They're drowning, and it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. And they, so they hate this guy. Yeah. And so there's, there is going to be a war between them and this L guy when they come back, all his people. Uh, is it going to affect human beings? I don't know. But they're going to fight because what happens is, is L, even though they're aliens and they're God and they're, and, and they're all this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. they couldn't figure out a way to get rid of these things. So they kept them here on Earth. Now they started to leak, almost like, like uh, nuclear waste. Yeah. Eventually it starts to leak. It finds a way. Yeah. And their half alien and half human souls have found a way to get out. Now, um, so go ahead. Did you want to ask a question, John? Uh, no, just I know in the book of Enoch uh, that God actually, he condemns their, the, the Nephilim souls to the earth. So what you're saying is accurate. I mean, as far yeah, as that yeah, goes. Well, 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 and he made a big mistake because even though he condemned the earth, he didn't realize how much they, they could screw with us. Mm-hmm. And so, so whenever, they, whenever I talk with rabbis and, and Judaic people, uh, uh, Judaism, they say, oh, no, God's all powerful. Well, no, no. He makes mistakes. He, yes, he's millions of years more advanced than us, but he makes mistakes. And this was a big mistake because our planet should not be this violent at this time. Yeah. We should evolve past that. But these beings have screwed with us and kind of held us back from mm-hmm. evolving. Mm-hmm. So when they come back, it's going to be a big fight. Now, will it evolve humans? 
Well, maybe if it involves me, I got no problem with that. But, but, yeah. but I don't know if it will involve humans. So, so there's this war of Gog and Magog, whatever yeah. they call it, right? Yeah. Which, which you know, I've read about, and it's going to be like that. You know, it's going to be like that. So um, now, is it going to destroy the world? Probably not. But it's probably not. It's going to be kind of an unpleasant time. I'm pretty sure. But look, just know this though: all these beings are in the photo. They're all in the photo. So wow. Wow. I know, man. It's crazy. No, yeah, I know. And uh, I really, I'm telling you, like, I've, I've tried to show, um, you know, what I, what I can as we're going through for, uh, for some of these things for the people who are watching. But if you literally download this photo, which I'll make sure to include this link here, um, all you got to do is you turn off all the lights. And if you're on a laptop, for some reason, it works really good. And you just. Yeah, you can't do it on a flat screen. You you're right. You, t you tilt the screen, and you, it's like. Uh, it's 3D like, photo pops out. Yeah, it pops out. different, And if you hold it in different directions, you can see different things, too. Yes, right. But the, the one thing, though, is, is because I have a connection with this, I can actually just zoom in and show you everything where it exactly is, and I could circle it. Now, because I'm technologically uh, handicapped, mm -hmm. I don't know. Dude, I am, I'm old. I'm like 60. Yeah. So like, the thing is, is, I don't know enough about computers. Mm -hmm. If I was a computer whiz, I'd be able to circle them, and you guys could pop them out, and you'd be able to see everything. Uh, but I don't know how. So, um, And I've gone to some... I've gone to some uh, uh, what are they called, uh, software engineers to help me? Yeah. Well, they all freak out when they see it. They go, I, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I've gone to four of them in the past, say, three years, and they all say the same thing. Oh, this, you know, this is too scary. I don't have, I'm telling you, man, it's nuts. Wow. So. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Now, uh, I think one of the, the, the craziest parts, and I don't, you haven't talked about it yet. I don't know if you're waiting on it, uh, but the, the, the part where you're actually, you have met with these entities, how did that happen? Like, uh, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, sometimes John, I go on a tangent. I apologize. Yeah. Let's get back to that. So what happens is I'm whining and complaining that, that old boo hoo me, I don't, you know, no one's paying attention. Everybody's kicking me out of their offices. So mm -hmm. one night I have a dream mm -hmm. and uh, the dream says, um, and, and this was the second time in my life where someone, actually a man's voice said something to me. Yeah. And, and you, you, you've heard my story before where I, I talk about my mom uh, giving birth to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, and, yeah. Will you tell, yeah, yeah, you tell where, people? Where, yeah, it, what happened was, was uh, guys, just before I talk about the aliens down at the river, um, what happens is, is so this is how I made a connection. Uh, ever since I was like five years old, ever since I can remember, my mom on my birthday has always said to me, Gary, um, I don't know why this is important, but you have to know these words that say, um, where did you come from? Where did you really come from? And I go, well, what does that mean? And she said, uh, when I was giving birth to you 10 minutes before, I passed out and I found myself sitting in a room completely dark. I was on the floor. And she said, and coming from a tunnel, she goes, I couldn't see it, but it sounded like a man's voice coming from a tunnel. And it was a booming, loud voice that said, where did you come from? Where did you really come from? Mm -hmm. And it said it three times. And she said, Gary, I don't know what that means, but it, I think it's something important. So every birthday, she would tell me that story. So cut to 50... 50, 50, 56 years later, okay, mm -hmm. or, or 55 years later, yeah. uh, I'm asleep in bed, and uh, and I had this. This was maybe two weeks after I had come up with the um, with the restoring the Great Pyramid idea, mm -hmm. and having Elon Musk and Sir Richard Branson email me back, and also finding the words uh, in the NASA photo. Yeah. I have a dream, and the dream says to me, um, Gary go down to the river, stand in the water, face east, uh, and say these words in Hebrew, and they were, where did you come from? Where did you really come from? Well, first it was uh, Abba, 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 which is Father, 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 Kiddosh, 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 which is Holy, 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 and then it's where did you come from? Where did you really come from? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I heard that, I sat up in bed and I said, oh my God, I, this is my connection. So I, you know, I ran down to the river, I yelled up the words, when I came back maybe a couple of days later, when I say a couple of days later, a couple of days later, I passed by, I could see everything in the NASA photo. I didn't know what it was, but I said, oh my God, there's a message in here. Yeah. So now, back to me, two years later, going down to the river, because I was whining and complaining things weren't happening fast enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said something. So I, I, I said, uh, 
I yell at, uh, here's what I do too sometimes, because I'm, I'm kind of an egomaniac, I yell at hell. And I don't think you're supposed to do that, <laughs> you know, but I did. And it's not, I don't think it's a good thing to do. So I said, come on, like that. I was going like this, come on, man, this is ridiculous. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that night I come back and the, vo- the same voice that said to me, where did you come from, where did you really come from? I said, go to the river tomorrow. So I did, I went down the river, all of a sudden I'm facing east, I say my Hebrew, stuff and I and I say okay guys what is it all of a sudden I hear and this is in the remember it's July 26 it's 120 degrees in the desert and mm-hmm. I'm standing in this polluted water <laughs> and uh, and there's and I can actually hear uh, kids riding because um, kids are all out of school yeah. uh, at the summertime and they're riding dirt bikes they're riding dirt bikes so all of a sudden I see up in the sky, I see kind of like crystals. They almost look like crystals forming, almost like in a circular pattern. Mm-hmm. And they move to the left. And I'm thinking, okay, finally, somebody's going to show up. Someone's going to say something to me, and this is going to be great. So I'm really excited. So I'm, And I'm saying, come on, come on. So the, 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 uh, the crystals, go, they stand about 20 feet, or they hover about 20 feet, above the water in the Gila River. And uh, and when I say Gila River, the water in the summertime, it's not flowing. It's kind of like it pulls up in this one area. It's almost like a little lake area, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And the crystals flat, they, they, first of all, they, 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 they like a two foot, two foot wide, two foot thick. I'm sorry, probably about uh, maybe a hundred feet wide. Yeah. Two feet thick. So it looks like a huge platform yeah. of crystal. And all of a sudden below it, appears these uh, like there's a guy named Ezekiel and he had this vision of these spinning wheels with eyes on them yeah. and these things terrible that flew back and forth back and forth well he said in his vision there were four mine there were two but one of them was Uriel and I know it's him because I see him in the photo so I said oh my god I said this is so cool and he speaks to me with his voice and I said you're Uriel right and he says yes you know Gary blah 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 when I say blah 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 I, I guess because I've said it so many times I don't want to go into so, too much detail and sound boring, mm-hmm. but uh, he pretty much said, "Hey, look, L's going to show up," and he didn't say L. He actually he actually called him Erevut, which is which um, was is what Enoch called him in the Book of Enoch, which uh, which that's what they called him up in up in heaven or up in the garden. So uh, he said he wants to speak to you, and I said this is awesome, and uh, and like I said, there was there was the lightning looking things, and there was the the spinning wheels with the eyes, and the two cherubim. Now the other cherubim, I didn't know who it was. I mean, like I, I had never seen him before. Yeah. But you know, they're huge. They're like eighteen feet tall. They have these huge two sets of wings, and uh, uh, but and and I didn't tell many of the listeners this, or even friends of mine this, because. Because it's so hard to believe. Do you know what I mean, John? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like so out there. You know, it's so out there. And it's like, because they say, who are you, Ezekiel? And I go, well, maybe. I said, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, uh, so all of a sudden, um, I, uh, I look up, up at the top of the, the, the um, uh, the crystal, yeah. the crystal platform, and there he is. There's the big alien. There is El. There is Abba. You know what I mean? Yeah. Abba is father in uh, Hebrew. And I said, there he is. And I and I looked at him. Now inside, now he was huge. He was like twenty five, thirty, maybe twenty, thirty feet tall. Huge, like wow. huge. Wow. And like, and I mean, like uh, the whole the whole look was just gigantic, gigantic. And I was hoping that someone would walk by or one of these kids on the motorcycle <laughs> would come by to, in order to say, "Oh my God, I saw what he saw." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and from, and and let me just say this though that that the, the big alien L, he his he had the he, in the photo. You can see all this in the photo. He's wearing kind of like a a robe. It's red. Okay, mm-hmm. and 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 it actually has red sleeves that go down to his gigantic hands. His feet—you couldn't see his feet; they were kind of like melted into the crystal. Okay, and but he had—he was wearing this big robe, and it had it had ancient Hebrew symbols on it that were in black. It, it was a red robe with black symbols, and he was wearing this this thing called a um, a hoshin, which is a breastplate, and it has it has twelve different really bright gemstones in it. But it, but let me just say this too. John, is that it It didn't look real. Like, it didn't look like flesh and blood. It looked like it was a projection or a holographic image. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, wow. So 
know, so that's what, so it looks like you could put your hand through it, but it was way out in the middle of the water, so I couldn't swim to it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Plus, this water is so dirty, you would never want to get into it. I mean, it's disgusting. <laughs> so what happens is, is I see inside his face are like 60 other human faces that make up his face. They, they constantly change, and they're all speaking a different language, but I hear his voice coming from, like, uh, telepathically. And it, said, and it says to me, it says, because I, I said to him, well, what should I call you? And he said, call me Abba. So I said, okay, which is, like I said, his father. And, um, and, and I knew he knew what I was thinking because he said to me, he said, Gary, no one else can see you here but us, but, but, but you. you. No one can see us but you. And I said, and I didn't want to believe it. So, so what happens is I hear all of a sudden some kid on a dirt bike comes up to me and he says, hey, mister, what are you doing in that water? <laughs> But now I, I know it sounds funny, and like, and and what I'm going to tell you is going to sound so out there. But I figure it this way, John. Since I'm a, since I got to see all this stuff first, I figure I I have kind of like a little bit of a pull or the right to to like give this guy a hard time mm-hmm. because I had been doing it at, at that time for about three and a half years. So when I said, so he said to me, Gary, no one else can see us but you. I thought, nah, that's impossible because it's so big. Yeah. Now. Now, but it's like, hey, Gary, look who you're talking to. Like, it's like, So what I did is I turned to this kid and I said, hey. Well, first of all, the kid says, do you know how dirty that water is? I said, yeah. I said, I'm doing ex- an experiment. And I said, do you see anything out there in that water? And the kid goes, no. And I go, well, dude, I said, but thanks, man. I said, but I'm just going to stand here and do my thing. I turn back. He takes off. The kid takes off. I turn back to Abba. I look at him and I swear to you, John, some people have said to me, Gary, this is, bu- this is bull crap. But I actually, he, he has eyes. He has a little nose. He has a big, he has a round chin. He has a mouth, a big mouth. Mm-hmm. John, he rolled his eyes. He <laughs> rolled his eyes like, oh my, because what that was telling me was he had done this probably millions of times before with people that think they have a right to give him a hard time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like this is, this is in his first rodeo. He's had to deal with us talking monkeys probably for millions and millions of years. Yeah. And for me to like give him a hard time, it's like, and he said to me, Gary, you have to pay attention because I'm a little ADD, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, so he starts telling me what I have to do, what I have to say, where I have to go. So that's, that prompted me to have to phrase to, to get money together to go to Egypt, to go to Jerusalem, to talk to other rabbis to, to, in the Holy Land and to talk to Muslims, the, 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 um, the leaders of the church in, in uh, the Muslim churches, they're called imams. So I had to meet with them and I met with the rabbis in Jerusalem and I met with some imams and, and some uh, scholars in Egypt. And uh, I tell them all this stuff, but you know, uh, and I tell them what they should do, but like you said before, you're kind of talking to people that are not going to believe it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Even in the Holy Land, uh, especially when they think when they say that I'm not Jewish, you know, when yeah. the Jews say, "Gary, we see the garden and we see everything you're talking about, but because you're not Jewish, we're not going to believe it." And I said, "Well, what if I have a Jewish soul?" I said, "What if I have? What if I have a piece of the soul of David or of, of Abraham or yeah. even of Enoch? Yeah. What if I have a piece of that?" And they go, "Well, it's like it stumped them." Do you know what I mean? I said, yeah. "I said just because I'm I'm a, I'm a." upper white trash in Florence. I said, I said, I said, that doesn't mean that I can't have the soul or a piece of the soul of a Jewish um, prophet. Why not? Why can't I have a, 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 a piece of Elijah or Ezekiel? Why not? Well, they didn't have an answer for that. You know what I mean? No, and I absolutely agree that that's completely possible, that, uh, this, that the skin, skin color and all that has nothing to do with it. It's, uh, nothing. Nothing. Ezekiel, any of them could be right here, right now, and probably are right here, right now. Well, you know, speaking of that, which is really funny, though, this is great. I mean, this is a great um, uh, segue into this. There is a lady, she does not know it, but she actually has the soul. She is the soul, and it's a she. She is the soul, and she is the reincarnation of Ezekiel. And I know this for a fact because she's in the photo. She's in the photo with me. She's beside me in the photo. Okay? Yeah. And her name is written in Hebrew. And I had a Hebrew scholar, I'm sorry, Hebrew rabbis translate it. And I also had one of the scholars translate it for me, an Aramaic scholar. Okay? So they translated the, the, 
the name for me. Not her last name, her first name, but it's her, because you, you can just see her. And it actually says, when you tilt it one way, you tilt it another way, it says Ezekiel, and it says Christine, okay? Wow. The lady who was Ezekiel, and naturally I've emailed her, and she emailed me back and said, Gary, you're out of your mind. <laughs> she is actually a um, scholar of uh, rabbinic law and Torah law, mm. and her name is Christine Hayes, Dr. Christine Hayes at Yale University. She is the reincarnation of Elijah. And when I told that to the rabbis in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. oh, no, 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 that's impossible. I said, do you know who she is? And they knew who she was. And I said, why do you know her? They said, because she's pretty much the leading authority on rabbinic law yeah. and Torah law. Like, she's smarter than all these guys that I'm talking with. Like, they're, they're clowns compared to her as far as knowing what it all means. Yeah. And I said, they, and I said, are you saying that she can't be Elijah because she's a woman? And they go, yes. And I go, well, that's totally ridiculous. Yeah. I said, you guys, check your watches. It's 2019. But, you know, these guys, they, you know, whenever they pray, they pray with just men, but almost like the Amish and people like that, you know? Yeah. It's men, and then women have their own section. Yeah. And it's like, and that, that's the other thing, too, that I asked Abba about when I met him, because I asked a lot of questions. And I said to him, I said, what's all this without men and women? And Bubba Lake goes, no, it's supposed to be, it's an even Stephen type thing. It's not men ahead. Men yeah. did that where they're above women in, in religion. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I kind of felt like that was a man-made concept. Why, well, certainly it is. And not only that, but also the things that Abba had told me, or El had told me, was that um, he's going to reveal himself on July 26, 2022 in Jerusalem. But they're already here, man. They're already here. They're, they're, they're already here. So, um, but he's going to reveal himself. So, uh, and I, I just learned maybe in the last, like, three months, because of the things I've been doing and going into, uh, going to Egypt and stuff, that they're here. And, um, and they're playing, they're getting all this stuff together. And so it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild. And, wow. and it's very exciting. So, well, and you know, I, I know this much, um, on, on this <laughs> channel, we get into, we get into a lot of these kind of things. And, um, there was a, a sign in the sky, uh, on September 23rd, 2017 that m- marked, uh, it's the great sign in heaven that basically marked uh, the the tribulation. Um, so that date that you're given, if you like, kind of um, go to the prophecy and in the prophecy, uh, nine months after there's a, a child that's born and all this, and it really adds up with with your date there. So um, it really jives really well with that date because the second part of the prophecy is um, basically beings coming down to earth. And uh, it's three and a half years later from that from that sign. So wow, yeah, well, we're getting close, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just hoping that they show up on that date because I'm gonna. It's really gonna piss me off. I mean, even though I I have literally no control over anything they do. Yeah. But it it will really piss me off because they're telling me this date. The date is written in Hebrew in the NASA photo. Mm-hmm. The original NASA photo was July 26, 2012. So it's exactly. It's actually ten, exactly 10 years after the photo, and it's exactly 74 years from 1948 when, uh, when uh, Israel was considered a, a nation. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. In 1948. So it's 74 years exactly from, not exactly from that date, but very close to that date. Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, oh, you know. It was unbelievable. So I'm really hoping they don't let me down because if, if I can punch one of these people, I will try to punch them <laughs> because that would really piss me off. Because somebody said to me, they said, well, Gary, what if it's, it's, it's totally not like you're saying and, and they're going to come down and they're going to kill us all and all that. And I said to him, I said, in, in movies, whenever the aliens show up, like in the Independence Day, they just show up and they start killing. They don't give you a message. They don't show you their whole hand. Yeah. You know, they don't show you everything in a NASA photo. And all you have to do is look and you'll see them and you'll be able to read the message. I said, that, I said that's why I don't think they're going to come down and do anything bad. Uh, yes, it's going to be scary. That's going to be bad. Uh, yes, they're going to probably, they're going to start with the, with the, uh, Jewish people, which are the chosen people, mm-hmm. they're going to be chosen first to be given all this knowledge and stuff. So they will have maybe like 
fifth dimensional knowledge and they'll be more advanced than the rest of us but uh, it has to start somewhere so why not and you might say well why is it in jerusalem why is that the center of religion because that's that number one is the proximity to where it is from the great pyramid okay Mm -hmm. also that north of i'm sorry yeah north north hang on northwest of let me make sure I'm thinking of the right area. Well, up in the hills, uh, up in the mountains past Jerusalem. So that would be, I'm going to say northwest. Or is that east? Now, uh, north, northeast. Northeast. What happens is, is down in those hills is where these Nephilim are buried. Their souls are buried down in there. So all of, this, all of that area there geologically is used by them as a prison. And the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx, uh, and that whole Giza Plateau, the energy from there is used to keep them tied in. You know, to keep, wow. keep them like imprisoned. Wow. So that that's why that's the center. That's why that's the center because that's where these beings use the Earth's energy to hold them in their cells. But like I said, they're starting to leak out, and they've been leaking out since I think the last three or four hundred years, maybe five hundred. But um, Anyway, well, so, so yes, that's why it's all happening in that area. Now, do, do you think that they use these great pyramids to to vibrate this message in the in the sand? I mean, what? How did they put the message there to begin with? Do you know? That well, you now let me just say this: a, that's a great question, John. Here's what it is. What I did was when I started finding all the messages, when I started finding all the the Hebrew words and stuff, I said, I wonder how far this goes back. So I went back to 1999 yeah and i pulled up as many satellite images from nasa and from the egyptian road department okay Mm -hmm. i pulled Mm -hmm. up all these these photos and what you can see is this okay everything is being what i did was i got the photos so every month i'm sorry every six months or so you can see that it's almost like it's, it was almost vibrating, and all these things were being built, like almost like a like a mural. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, so when when you go to 1999, and you got your, I saw the first photo of uh, of NASA. I'm, I'm sorry, of the Giza Plateau. I saw that the letters that were written beside the Great Pyramid in 2012 that I found. Mm-hmm. Right? What happens is they're at the top of the photo. They're at the top, all the way at the top of the head, all the way at the top. As you flick the pages all together, you can see those those things vibrate closer and closer and closer. And on July 26, 2012, they're right beside the Great Pyramid. Wow. So it all had to do with vibration. It was done by the Great Pyramid because it is alien technology and it still works. Wow, wow. Now let me, t- now let me explain to you real quick okay. about how human beings can access this knowledge because oh. inside the Great Pyramid is made you gotta remember it's made out of granite and it's made out of limestone yep. but in certain parts of the Great Pyramid is a thing called Tura limestone T-U-R-A limestone it's highly polished limestone it almost looks like a TV screen mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. okay but that's it's only in certain parts of the Great Pyramid and other pyramids okay yeah. but especially the Great Pyramid what happened is, is this back in 2002 Okay, just, now just remember, the Great Pyramid's a machine, okay, and it can detect technology. So what happened was, in 2002, National Geographic and Fox, the Fox Network, they did a, a, they did a two-hour special called Inside the Great Pyramid. You can buy the video, okay? Yeah. What they did was, there was a guy named Rudolf Gattenbrinks in 1998. The, the Egyptian government hired him to find some venting ventilation in the Great Pyramid, to, to put some vents in there because it's so stuffy. I was in there. I was sweating like a, like a pig. I mean, it was, it, it, it's, it's so hot and humid in there, and it, and it smells, okay? Mm-hmm. So what happens is they hired him to do this. So he built, the, the, there's, the king, there's the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. The king's chamber has a north and, uh, a north and south, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, a north and south, oh my God, what are they called? Uh, that go outside. They're, they're uh, what are they called? Help me. Johnny. Uh, <laughs> I, hey, come on. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're called, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing my mind here. I'm talking too much. But the Queen's Chamber mm-hmm. have, uh, 
what they're, they're eight inches by eight inches and they're a little like um they're not called tunnels they're uh but anyway rudolf gattenbrinks he this german engineer he built a little robot Oh, shaft. Shoot. Okay, okay. A shaft. The king and queen's chamber, they have shafts. Well, in the king's chamber, the shafts go outside. Yeah. Like, you, they go you're right all the way outside. You can, like, see the stars out there, right? Yeah. I mean, so, okay. But in the queen's chamber, they don't, they're, they're, you can't see outside. There's a block there. Well, they found that on the block, when they sent up this little um, camera on a robot, they found out that there were two copper hoops on a on a block that was... You know, like I said, the chain, the um, the shafts are eight inches by eight inches. Mm -hmm. So the shaft was uh, it, it, the block was four inches thick, and it had two uh, copper hoops on it. The only problem was was copper hadn't been invented by humans till fifteen hundred years after the pyramids were supposedly built. <laughs> So, so all the all the academics were going, "Oh my God, this is impossible! What do those hoops mean? Yeah. Okay? Like, what does this mean?" So what they did was they decided, that was in 1996, so in, in 2002, six years later, they did this special where they sent another robot up there with a drill on it and a camera, okay? Yeah. First they drilled a hole, just a little hole, to see what was behind this block. The way they knew it was a four inch block was they sent sonar up there, and sonar found out that it was a, it was a limestone block, mm -hmm. and it was Tora limestone, Tora, yeah. the, the polished one. They drilled the hole, they put a camera in there, Okay, they put a camera and the camera started taking pictures, but the camera, it, saw, it showed that seven inches from this one block was another white kind of screen, okay? Yeah. It took a bunch of pictures, like hundreds of pictures. Mm -hmm. The pictures were not released, now that was in 2002. The pictures were not released till like 2010 or 2011 by the Antiquities Authority in Egypt, okay? Yeah. So they released the photos. Now, what I did was I showed you in your and uh, I sent you, yes. there's a photo uh, that was originally from the the, the uh, National Geographic's photo, and then I enhanced it, and then I drew a picture of what you were seeing. Do you, can you pull that up? Sure. Can you put it on the site so people can see it? Yep. It's right up here. I got it up right now. And they can actually go to, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, they can actually go to my Twitter thing for Gary Parker. Um, and they can actually see that photo and okay. uh, all that kind of stuff. So you can see it. So what it is is this: when I, when I, when I, after I found all this stuff, I went back and I and I uh, and I looked at the photo and I said, wait a minute. And I and I tilted the. Ca I, I was in a dark room. I used a magnifying glass. I tilted. I said, oh my God, that's what what the Egyptian Egyptologist said. And the experts said were that those little marks were makers' marks. That the people who made those, mm -hmm. that those, that they were makers' marks from the pyramid from six thousand years ago. That those marks represented numbers of cubits, or okay. with the distance that, like two hundred and twenty feet from the queen's chamber up to the end of the shaft. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what they said it was. Well, that is not what it is. Either they didn't see it, or they blurred it on purpose. So all of a sudden, when I was down there at, in the in the uh, water with Abba, mm -hmm. and I said to him, I said, is there anything you can show me where I can show everybody? And he said, when you, and he said to me, he goes, go home, look at the, he actually said, the, um, the um, uh, 2002 National Geographic, he said, you'll see, you will see three people sitting in a crystal throne. And I go, what? He goes, you'll see it, just go home, you'll see it. I went home, I pulled it up, I looked at it and I said, no way. In the photo below the number 20 is three people. They're black people. All of them are black. They're, the man is black. Um, I'm sorry. He's, he's, he's a gorgeous looking black guy. Gorgeous looking black guy. Mm -hmm. he's, he's there, his son is sitting on his right shoulder and his wife is sitting down uh, beside him. She's maybe six foot, foot tall. He's about nine feet tall. He has his gigantic right arm around her. And he said, uh, you, can you see my drawing there? Yes, yes. That's I exactly that. what was taken. Those photos were taken. It is not a maker's mark. What happened was, was this. I found a binary code in the Torah limestone. I went to a couple uh, experts. They saw it. They said, Gary, this is unbelievable because this binary co code, there's no ones. It's all zeros. Mm. And I said, yeah. So anyway, so what happens is, is when they put that photo, when they put that mini camera, fiber optic camera into the hole, 
in the in through the through the block, correct? And it was taking the pictures. Yes. The pyramid sent a binary code, which created those pictures, created those images. Those images were not from six thousand years ago. Those images were images were, were from two thousand and two. Those wow. things were sent to that camera because the because the Great Pyramid can detect technology. And the Great Pyramid, all the limestone in the Great Pyramid contains this binary code and it will send those images and it will send so many images to whoever puts the camera back into that spot. Wow. So, so literally what what, the technology what, 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 was decoding it. That's it. What would happen is, is this. If they would put the camera back in there and then broadcast it on TV and on the on the web and they turn the light down a little bit you would see it would be like a movie mm-hmm. you would see the beginning of mankind you would see how everything starts they would they would show everything from the beginning of time like a movie wow that's wow. right now try this John try calling or meeting with people in Egypt and say to them hey can I get that camera back in that hole <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you the F-O, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's uh, that's not going to happen. They're probably no. the so biggest... I, uh, I told him, I said, this is... Because I showed it to him. I said, what you guys think are makers, Marsh, or maybe you made that up. I said, those are three aliens sitting in a, in a crystal throne. Now, those three aliens, they are... Just know that I know this. They are Ptah, Sekhmet, and Nefertem. And mm-hmm. they... And, Ptah and Sekhmet are the creator gods of Egypt. That's who they are. They're not creator gods. They're big aliens who got took mankind with with uh, with L mm-hmm. and made took mankind from apes into modern man. Wow! And wow. they're sitting in the crystal throne. And actually, the lady who who is uh, uh, um, Ptah Sekhmet, mm-hmm. she's actually reaching her hand up to us. And she's actually wearing, she has a round crystal on her forehead. It's amazing, man. So that's what's in the photo. So, and if people would just take time to look at it, they would see it. But people just, people want to, most humans, they just want to look at things on on, uh, on YouTube and go, oh, look at the cat, it's playing chopsticks. <laughs> this takes a little bit more time, guys. It's a little more intricate. It's a little more, you know, it, it, it's not cat, a cat playing chopsticks. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, well, I, I, the, the biblical, I'm sorry, the Judaic scholar at U, U.S. up at uh, the University of Arizona, he said to me, he goes, why, he said this to me, he goes, why is it so hard to see? I said, maybe because it's the answer to where mankind came from, and they just don't want any idiot to see it. But then again, I don't know why they pick me. So, <laughs> so anyway. Well, you know, I, I do think that uh, you're right. Most people, they they won't take the time, but... Like I said, I have a, I have an audience that absolutely they will and they'll they'll look at it and they'll that you know they won't just take your word for it. They're good good for researching and really looking into things and coming to their own conclusions and you know so um, yeah. and I think that what you what what makes your your story really significant to me is because you've got a lot of evidence a lot of evidence to back up the things that you're saying you have pictures you have photos you have a lot of a lot of ways that people can can look for themselves they don't have to take the word for it but they yeah they have to look and they have to look the way i showed them to look you know what i mean so so and also let some people know this too that sometimes there's certain laptops that don't work like they don't have the right kind of screen. Not not all laptops work. So if you can't see it mm-hmm. right from the beginning, especially if you can't see the serpent, because yeah. the serpent is one of the biggest things. If you yeah. can't see the serpent, then borrow a friend's laptop or, or your brothers or sisters or your aunts or uncles, because uh, then you'll see it. But sometimes certain laptops don't work because the screen, it, the lighting's different. So yeah, I just I just had to put that out there. No. Yeah, I- but you, you, Go ahead, I'm I know, sorry. I know what you're talking about. I have um, two different laptops, and one of mine has a different kind of screen on it, and I can't see it on it. So good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I'm telling the truth. Yeah, and and the other thing too is is um is how many people have you ever talked to or, or have have you ever read about that actually said that that the the Great Pyramid can detect technology, and all you have to do is put a camera into a hole, leave it there, and it will show you pictures throughout all of mankind. How many? 
John, if people have never told you that. Not none. And Egyptologists are are the worst liars of all. I mean, they... <laughs> <laughs> no, because my, my point was, no one has ever said it, because no one knows it but me, and I'm just trying to share it with you guys. Now, if we... If there was any way to get that camera put back in there, yeah, uh, which I don't think will ever happen, but but it can, but the Great Pyramid can detect that technology, and we have evolved in that enough technologically mm-hmm. for them to say, okay, we're going to let you guys see where you came from. So wow, wow. Uh, now, what would you would you say to somebody that you know who who is who would have fear about, you know, these things that you're showing to the world here? You know, this, what would you, you tell them, you know? I would tell them to, I would definitely tell them to be afraid and always be cautious and, and never just, you know, like in the ancient times, you always hear these guys, when God showed up, he, you, they fell down on their knees and they yeah. were praying. We don't need to do that. We don't have to fear any of these guys. Mm-hmm. And just because they show up and they've showed us all these photos, I still don't trust them 100%. I just don't because because I'm a human being and we know how 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 people that are more advanced than us could, can take advantage of us. Yeah. So if there's any way if if this so if someone said to me Gary, can I just like be relaxed and know that I'm going to go to heaven? No. No, what you have to do is always be on guard. Mm-hmm. And because Cause, and I will be the first one. I don't own a gun, but I would go buy a gun. <laughs> I would, it probably it wouldn't do anything. It, it wouldn't probably even affect them. Yeah. But I would be the first one to lead a fight if they if all this ends up being a lie and they end up being mean. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So 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 me. Even though I sound real positive, I'm real happy and everything. I will not fall on my knees. Like when when Abba showed up, when when El showed up, I did not fall down on my knees, mm-hmm. and I was not afraid. And I'm not going to be afraid because I'm not an ancient man. I'm not 3,000 years ago. Yeah. Somebody shows up in a, in, a, in a chariot that's on fire. That's a UFO to me. Yeah. And I'm not. And if E.T. shows up, I'm not going to kneel down. The, you know what I mean? You yeah. have to prove to me that, like, that you're not going to hurt us and that you're not going to ca- cause prob- more problems. Yeah. So, so someone said to me, what should I do about being afraid? I said, that's healthy. Be afraid, but be prepared. And the way to be prepared is look at the photo. Let's all figure out what it says in ancient Hebrew. Let's get these academics to get off their high towers and take a look at this and know that these beings can put... Buddy, in, in this, John, in this, in this photo, it's four levels deep yeah. with seven different dimensions. It's insane amount of information. Yeah. And, uh, and we need to get it figured out because I'm just one guy. And trust me when I tell you, I barely graduated high school. So, mm, so yeah. buddy, I'm not that smart. So anybody who can help, I'd really appreciate it. And if we could get these eggheads on board, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll make sure to put your uh, Twitter, and um, if you want me to put an email uh, in the description. Yeah, you, you can put that email at, uh, it's, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's G, as in Gary, G. Parker, P A R K E R 36, 36 Gary, G A R Y, at AOL.com. Absolutely, absolutely, and I'll make sure to include all that in the description, because, I mean, I know that there's people out there that, um, are watching that you know do have different skills that maybe would be able to lend a hand and help in in some kind would, of way. I would love that. I mean, and plus, you got to know flying over to Egypt and flying to uh, to Jerusalem and doing that whole thing and stuff. You know, Gary's not rich. Believe me, he's a poor boy, and I don't need any money from anybody. Like I said, yeah. it's all free. Yeah. But uh, if anybody can help out to enhance the thing and stuff, because like I said, I'm technologically um, uh, uh, what's it called? Technologically, handicap. Uh, <laughs> did you say what you say? You said handicapped earlier. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, Spe- yeah special needs when it comes to te- technology. So, so any way you guys could help out, I would love it. And uh, like I said, if you're skeptical, which you should be, mm-hmm. go down to the river. Like I said at the beginning of this, stand in the water, make the connection with L. Make the connection. See what happens. Maybe it will open up a certain part of your brain. You'll see more than I can see, and you can help the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, and um, 
I think that being skeptical is a good thing because then oh, you're, it's a great thing. You know, you're you're curious, and and at least uh, I think that that's what the curiosity is what makes people look into these things. If they was convinced one way or the other, and they was decided, they probably wouldn't even bother with it. So, right. it's usually that curiosity that'll that'll make it's what made me look further into to what you're saying. Um, I wanted to know if it was BS or not. So, and I look right. and I tried it myself, and you know, all different types of things, trying to get to the bottom of it and uh and, and i and, and john i know people don't have they don't have the time i have they, they, they they're not obsessed with it like i am mm -hmm. and they don't have to be yeah. even if it's just 20 minutes a night you know like like uh, turn off turn off porn for 20 minutes <laughs> just, just 20 minutes you know what i mean come on you know what I, you know what i'm saying it's like and and watch and and just look at the photo and but watch the video follow my directions and then and say oh my god i can see that serpent or i can see that tree and um and i do see the flaming sword and then from that it will just keep growing especially if you go down to the water you're standing there face east you say the words you'll make a connection and, it, and trust me it's all done with by vibration they will send you a signal that will open up a certain part of your eye or your brain mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see it you know what i mean yeah no uh i i absolutely believe there's there's something to this. That's why I, I I've had you on. I you know I think that people should at least check this out. I'm not saying that yeah. these these guys are the good guys or the bad guys. I'm not saying right. this is God or not God. I mean I don't I honestly don't know which way or the other. Just to, you know I know what I you know, what from my my studies who I th I think they're the Anunnaki. That's my my opinion. Um, as far as, you know, the ancient Sumerian texts. That's who, that's who they kind of seem like to me from the way they look, uh, the, the, the double wings and all that stuff. But uh, in yeah, the, I, I don't know enough about that, but, but, but I would, yeah, why not, you know? Well, uh, all I know is they're not from here. <laughs> that's right, and, and, and especially uh, the Cyg Cygnus star and all that. I mean, all that right. really, it really, you know, just kind of solidifies, you know, what I think. And they, according to the the ancient Sumerian text, they, they are the, the creation gods, and that's where the Bible came from. That's where right. it all came from. So. Also, I totally agree with you 100%, John. Uh, and he, here's another thing, too. I forgot to mention this. Um, about four years ago, when I first found this stuff and everything, and I contacted NASA. No, mm -hmm. I contacted a guy by the name of, well, first of all, in Northern California, there's a place called the Ames Research Center. Mm -hmm. And they're the guys that control the um, those robots up on Mars, yeah. right? Yeah. Those rovers or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy who ran it at that time, and his name was General Peter Warden. I think his first name is Simon, but mm -hmm. people call him Pete Warden. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was, was his email was right online. So I said, well, I'm, I'm gonna, I know he's busy. He's got like 10,000 employees, and he's running this whole thing, but I'm just going to email him. Okay, yeah. and I, I'm going to see. And, and my heading my heading was um, discovered writing uh, ancient Hebrew on the Giza Plateau beside the Great Pyramid. Well, John, he emails me back 30 minutes later. Wow. And this is a guy who runs NASA. So when he emailed me back, I thought, wait a minute, something's up. <laughs> NASA knows something because why would this guy? Yeah. He's a general and he runs the Ames Research Center. What's he doing emailing me back? So I'm thinking, well, it must, this must be important. Yeah. So uh, I, he emails me back. He goes, well, Gary, he emails back and says, well, send it to me. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. So I emailed him the photo that I sent you and that your, that your audience is looking at and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I told him uh, there's a Garden of Eden and there's this and that and there's words that say Lord of the Under God and Lord of the Underworld all this other stuff and uh, he says I can't see it I said uh, he said he said here's my number call me oh, oh no I emailed him back and I said um, General Warden or I think I said Dr. Warden was a general he's a doctor also because he's an astrophysicist or something and I said uh, I said uh, you have to be in a dark room you have to be instructor on how, and you have to have a laptop so he said well he emailed me back and said well here's my number call me and give me instructions so like he was like totally into it. I couldn't. Believe, this was blowing me away because I thought, oh my god. Yeah. So so yeah, it was unbelievable. So what happens is, I call him. I go, uh, hey, hi, I'm Gary Parker. Blah blah blah. He says, okay. He goes, I'm in a dark room. I have all the lights off. I said, okay. And I said, I want you to look in this area. And I told him where to go to see the serpent. Yeah. I said, now tilt your screen. He goes, oh yeah. He goes, it popped right out at me. He goes, Gary, what is it? I said, it's the serpent in the Garden of Eden. 
And he goes, no. And I go, okay. Yeah. And then remember, I also had sent him some of those drawings that I had of Asherah, the Tree of Life, yeah. that I think you have in, in the yeah. in, that I have on the on the video. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, he sees it all, and it, and every time he says, at first he said, yeah, he said it like this it's in this tone. He said, yeah, Gary, I see the serpent. I said, okay, now you're going to see a tree. All of a sudden, his tone kept getting lower. He goes, yeah, I see it. Like, like, <laughs> like, oh my God, this is like, yeah, he like got real serious. I said, well, on the far left, you're going to see a guy's head. It looks, it's just his, his, his big head and his neckline. That's all you're going to see. Bubba, he goes, yeah. He goes, I said, now pull it. I said, zoom all the way out and look at it, and you'll see it. It'll look like a mosaic. He goes, I see it. I said, well, that's the Garden of Eden. And he goes, I see it. And he goes, listen, Gary, he goes, can I get back to you in a couple of weeks? I never heard from him again. <laughs> wow. So, 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 but then four weeks after our conversation, he quit, and he got together with a Russian billionaire, and he and what was it, what's the guy's name um, that uh, used to be in the wheelchair? Uh, oh, Stephen the, the, Hawking. Yeah, Stephen. He, Stephen Hawking, and the Russian billionaire started a uh, like a SETI type company to search for extraterrestrials. Wow! After you showed him that. <laughs> after I showed it to him, and, and he goes, "I see it all." I go, "Yeah, I, I know you see it all." I said, "Because I just because if I could instruct you anybody over the phone, and they would find it, they would see it." But anyway, uh, yeah. Man, so I wanted to bring that up too. So just know that NASA, one of the big guys at NASA knew about this years ago. So. Well, and they definitely haven't disclosed it to the public. That's for sure. And I don't. And that's what pisses. That's what pisses me off. It just totally. That's like dealing with these guys at SETI. You know, it's like, bro, quit thinking so small. The, the the world has to find out about this because it. I don't want anybody jumping off of buildings, but yeah. they might anyway. But yeah. I'd, I'd much rather have see it. Here's another thing, too, just real quick, John. Mm -hmm. I, I, am I jumping around too much? No, you're fine. You're fine. <clears throat> Here's what I think, John. I think when people see this and they realize that it's a message and that the whole photo is a message, that it has four levels to it, and on the fourth level is written a whole new Torah. Like, there's, there's a Torah written in here. Mm -hmm. Like, there's 200,000 Hebrew words written in this photo. Wow. Once they see it and they realize what it is, People will be looking at it so much, and they'll be examining it for so long that there will there won't be any more wars. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll be they'll be so obsessed with it. They'll they, there will be no. They'll realize there is something so big out there. We better start being nice to each other. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I I really wish that would would happen, man. I really. That's what do. I'm hoping. I'm hoping just this this interview and all the other interviews I've done, and people will finally say, I am going to go down the river. Now I see it, and all of a sudden it. All of a sudden, it goes around the world, and it creates this thing where everybody's so obsessed with it, and also frightened a little bit, but so obsessed, thinking, oh my God, I can see everything now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, uh, there's a lot of people that don't believe, you know, that don't believe the creation story. They believe in uh, this, and this from, you know, from what I've seen in this, it's a, it's a mix between evolution and creation. It's a little bit of both. It really is. It's, it's, it totally is. It's, it's evolution, it's creationism, and it's also technology. Yeah. It's alien technology. But they use nature as their technology. Wow. They've evolved to that. And I don't know how they've done it, but, but they have. Uh, so, um, yeah, they can do... Anyway, I, I'm rambling. I apologize. No, man, but, uh, you've been... But, but you're right, because some people say, well, I believe God created man. I goes, well, he did. And, it, and, it, and I go, but we were apes first. It, it had to start with a cell. Because in the, in the photo, it shows that God, or L, has a head, he has arms, he has a chest. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Jews, uh, or Ju um, in Judaism, they believe that he's a spirit. Well, yeah. he's both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I... I, and I think anybody, I think the easiest thing to see is the profile of the giant alien head. I mean, well, absolutely. And if you go right down by where his eye would be, right where his eye would be, you will see him, and that's where he's transferring the souls yeah, from the Great Pyramid and the Earth. They come up, and then they go out of his left hand into these apes, and then they become, they, they transform into human beings. So now, I, and I don't know how long it took. I don't think it took seven days, but I, I think it took a lot longer. So yeah, yeah. well, and I, I think uh, I think that probably you know some people will will think that this is um, you know uh, a bad sign. Some people will think it's a good one. I mean, you're probably going to get a mixed batch, you know of. I, oh yeah, for sure, man. Believe me. Like I said, that guy. 
I, w- I was at Thanksgiving dinner and I showed it to him. Oh my God, it ruined the dinner. I didn't mean to ruin the dinner, but when he saw it, he just freaked out. He actually grabbed rosary, rosary beads and started kissing them. Wow. It was, dude, it was wild. It wow. was wild. I said, oh, come on, man. He goes, no, he goes, you, you've been looking at it for five years. I just looked at it for 27 minutes. Now I'll never sleep again. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, but you know, that, that just shows the, the, the state of that person, though, that they're really uncomfortable with, you know, their life and who they are. I think anybody who's who's right with their spirit and right with their life, it won't, they won't be terrified by it, you know? It, I hope not. I hope, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. So, but, but let me just say this. Most people, you, that's how they react. They think, oh, my God, this is interesting. I want to learn more. And that's the whole thing. It, it, to learn more, to, to 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 so we can be prepared when they show up. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I I think uh, that you gave really good advice too on not fully trusting, you know, their right. intentions. You know, um, you said I I do agree um, uh, with them revealing things like that. You know, you would think that if it was going to be an attack, at least an outright attack, it would be a lot more covert. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. Why would they send? A, why would they send? The, why would they show their hand? Like in poker, you don't show your hand, but they did. They showed everything. Everything's in this photo. Well, the only thing that does scare people too is when when I tell them what's written on the Lamb is God and the Lord of the Underworld. Yes, you know that? because you're not taught that. But in the photo, it shows that that like uh, that God and the Lord of the Underworld work together mm-hmm. in order to create souls and to to actually there's good souls and bad souls and they're mixed together because in your body you think you have one soul well you don't you have two souls one's good one's bad and throughout life you make decisions you go through hard times through good times and when you make the right decisions your soul evolves okay Mm -hmm. but you always have to have that tug of war in there going on in order for your soul to evolve even faster and make it stronger so so in the photo you see god and the lord did the underworld together and um believe it or not the good souls and the bad souls mix together and they go down through this temple which they call the eternal temple mm-hmm. and the eternal which is the third temple are you familiar with uh, yes. the first first and second temple yes yes i am well there, 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 there's a there's a there's a uh, rabbinical sage and his name is is um rashi mm-hmm. there's the rambam and rashi well rashi he said this was 1500 years ago he said that when god shows up he's going to come down in the temple and he's going to land uh, in jerusalem this was 1500 years ago whereas the rambam another judaic sage or just a genius guy who interpreted the torah he said no man is going to build the third temple well he's wrong rashi's right Mm -hmm. and the eternal temple the third temple is already built and they use that as a filtering system to combine both good and bad souls then they use the earth and other planets energy to shoot them out to other planets where they're needed wow it's almost like a it's almost like a funneling system wow Wow. Yeah, and it's all, it's all in the photo, man. It's all in the photo. All this is. And you know, there's Stephen King is a brilliant writer. Stephen yeah. King is crazy brilliant, okay? Yeah. He can write like nobody says he's got the greatest imagination in the world. Yeah. I do not. But I have all this stuff. And people say to me, well, you have a great imagination. I said, no, it's in the photo. I didn't come <laughs> up with this. Yeah. Because people say, how do you know that? I said, I don't know. It's in the photo. I can see it and I can show it to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would make I'm it... Not that, I re- really, I'm not that smart, John. I'm really not. <laughs> well, no, I, I do agree. You can see uh, uh, all the... I mean, I've seen a lot of what you're you're talking about my, myself. I've, I've looked over this photo and you're right. I've seen... The more I've looked at it, the more things have popped out to me too. It's like my eyes kind of have to get used to, yeah, to looking exactly. at it. it. It takes a little bit, but if, next time you go to, to the water, go to the river. Mm-hmm. If you have a river close by in Ohio? Yep, yep. Good. Go to even though it's freezing right now. <laughs> stand in the water. It will only take you like three minutes. Mm-hmm. You can take it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, absolutely. All right. Uh, and, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say you have to be in bare feet. Don't be a wimp and try to wear those like surfers <laughs> slippers. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I do think that um, God, the the force of God, is. Is in nature. It's in the earth. It's oh in, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's in us, and and that's what makes sense to me. 
um, you know, connecting in that way. I, it, it does make sense to me. And um, I, I don't understand, you know, why man has built buildings and the traditions they have and, and think somehow that that's where God is. But, you know. Well, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I say to, um, to uh, all these priests and rabbis and ministers and stuff. I say to them, I said, listen, I said, when you're in a building and you're wearing shoes and socks and you're on a cement or a wood floor and you have the windows and doors closed, nobody can hear. Nothing gets out. That's all that, you know, people came up with ideas for churches and for synagogues and temples in order to make money. Because mm-hmm. you know, most of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so really the first temple was nature. When Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, the very first thing they did, because they wanted to get back in, mm-hmm. they each went to a river, they stood in the river, they faced east. In mm-hmm. different rivers, they stood in the river and they yelled up to God facing east. Because the water connected with the earth was was how they talked to him, okay? Mm-hmm. That's how the con- conversation, I mean, that's how communication happened. Okay, now that's in a, in a book called The Book of Adam and Eve, and that's what it said, and it, and it made total sense to me. Yeah. So, when, when, so when, I, when I meet with these rabbis and everybody, I always say to them, come down to the river. Come down to the river. I said, you'll be connected to earth. Say any prayer you want, but stand in the water in your bare feet and face east. And they all say no. That's because they've been taught that for for a thousand years or fifteen hundred years that no, we got to be in a building. You don't have to be in a building. Earth and nature is the temple. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. I I completely I completely agree. I don't think that it's in a building. And you know, uh, if you look at you know what Jesus said, he's talking about the buildings will be they won't be not a brick will be standing. So you know. Right. <laughs> right. And every time you hear about Jesus, he's either near water, in water, or outside doing speeches out on the ground, out on the hill, or something. Well, you know what I mean. Well, when he uh, he was he was baptized, and that's when the Spirit descended upon him was in water. Right. Well, there you go. And he was in water. I forget the name of the guy. Who, oh, John the Baptist. Is Absolutely, kind of John the Baptist. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and you know, I'm a. I think Jesus is a great guy. Believe me when I tell you, I know a lot about Jesus, not from what you guys know. But just know this, he's still working for us. Not, you know how people say, well, does he forgive us our sins? No, but he's doing a lot of work. And when I say him, in the photo it shows that he has, that I've counted, 18 souls, okay? Mm -hmm. He has 18 souls. And eight of those died on the cross that day. He did not die. But 18 of his souls did, and they came down. And remember I was telling you how the Nephilim were leaking out from their place? Well, he and the Ark of the Covenant stop those things from coming into our third dimension. Wow. You, you remember how you can see him on, on yeah. you can see him on the uh, in the photo? Yes, yeah. Well, below his feet is the ark of the covenant. And below his feet and in the ark of the covenant covenant are all these alien souls. And they they have a border or they have built a border there for all these Nephilim souls not to come into our dimension, but some still sneak in and you can see it in the photo. So yeah, I, I know this is, sounds so out there, but it's alien technology, and they deal with souls. You know, they're like soul. Uh, <laughs> they're they're soul merchants. Do, you know what can, I mean? Can so, I ask you a question, just concerning uh, Jesus? Do you think he was human? Just your opinion? Absolutely, he had to have been. He, his mother and father were both human. He was enhanced. He was enhanced. He he didn't he. As a matter of fact, in the photo, now you you can't you can't see this, but in the photo. He's he's human. He's totally human. But mm-hmm. he was enhanced by L. Okay, by giving him so many souls. I don't know if you know this, but back in back in the Dead Sea Scrolls or something, or where, I forget the stuff where they found it. But they said that some of the apostles had said that Jesus could make himself look like a little kid or mm-hmm. or a woman. Like he he could change his appearance. Mm-hmm. Like when people saw him, they could see him as different human. Yeah, and. Well, the reason being is because he had that ability of vibration. He could change his look to make you see something you didn't see. And he knew, he, he knew who he was, he knew what was going to happen, and he knew that he had to take a beating and take one for the team, the team being the human race. Okay? Wow, yeah. So, so he knew all this stuff had to happen. He knew who he was, but he could not be there and tell people, because he wasn't allowed to, tell people 
that giant aliens put you here. You know, this God that you're praying to uh, is, a, is, a, is a giant alien, and he can do all this stuff. And there's actually alien souls that are trying to come out here and kill all of us. Well, he couldn't tell people that because he wasn't allowed to. Mm -hmm. So trust me when I tell you, the guy knew who he was. He was the smartest guy on the planet, and he knew he was going to take a beating, and he knew he was going to, part of him was going to die. And you got to remember, this is a guy who had never been in a fight his whole life, yeah. and he got the, the crap beat out of him, and yeah. he died. But then, but not him, he didn't die, but eight of his souls died, but he had to take, take a beating for this to become the border with the Ark of the Covenant. Wow, wow. I, yeah. know, it's, I know it sounds crazy, even as crazy as putting that, um, that camera back into the Great Pyramid, into the hole, mm -hmm. but trust me when I tell you, everything I'm telling you is true, and it's all in the photo. You know, um, I, 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 I'm gonna get a t -shirt. I'm gonna get a T-shirt that says it's all in the photo. <laughs> that, that's what you need. Check out Seriously, the photo. So I don't have to keep saying it. <laughs> so go ahead. What were you saying? No, you know, um, I I do know that when you know Jesus did appear to the disciples, they wouldn't recognize him at first because he would come in a different different form. He would he would look sure. different to them each time. You're right. So think think about this. Think about if now you. A lot of people don't even believe you have a soul. Well, trust me when I tell you, you do. But just think if you had like 18 or 17 of them shoved in your chest. You know, this was like an experiment. They, Abba or El had never done this before. They didn't have to do it on other planets. They didn't have the Nephilim come down from heaven and have sex with humans. Yeah. So they didn't have this these human-alien hybrids. They mm -hmm. didn't have them. And, and also, you got to remember something. Not all the Nephilim were giants that ate people. Some of them were human, but they were half Nephilim, half human, and they were loving people. They were really good people. So when the flood came, in the photo it shows, you can see the, you can actually see uh, Noah and the ark, okay? And you can see that not just animals are going on board, but hundreds of these half human, half Nephilim, but they're not giants. They look like regular humans and they have kids. And they're, and you can tell the kids are hugging them that they're that it's a it's a family. Yeah. So so why did he have to kill all of them? You know what I mean? Why? Well, because it was he had said that it was mankind's turn to earn the earth or to to to, to uh, rule the earth, not um, half alien, half human hybrids. Mm -hmm. So that's why he did it, but. I, I totally understand why they hate him and why they they, they, they they would love to kill him and everybody that's involved with him. Because that, come on, think about it. Drowning all those people? Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, that's really terrible. That's pretty cruel. Because well, whenever you think of the Neph Nephilim, you always think of one or two or three or four giants mm -hmm. that are 60, 80 feet tall and they're eating people. Yeah. And no, no, no. There's maybe, let's just say, 60 or 80 of those guys and there's hundreds of thousands of half human, half aliens that are nice people and they have families and the kids are half human, half alien. Some are whole human or they have, some have human souls and alien souls and it's all a mix, but they're not bad people. But then to kill all of them, oh dude, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> so, does that make sense? Am I making any sense? No, you know, it, it makes total sense to me. And um, I've read the first book of Adam and Eve. I've read I, this is. I do a lot on the text and stuff like that on this channel. So, I mean, it's it all lines up as far as you know. I'm concerned. Um, like I said, I I believe that what what we're looking at is the Anunnaki. That's just my opinion. Um, you okay. Know, all right. You I, know. I like I said, I don't know anything about them. But uh, but I have seen I have seen some photos of uh, of them and yes with with the double wings and the beards and they yes. have but like like as a matter of fact when you see they're carrying they almost look like they're wearing watches and they're carrying like little like purses yeah well if you if you see that plant there that it almost looks like well, that is the tree of knowledge that they're taking stuff from that's what it looks like in the NASA photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have a point. I mean, it, it could be, man, but I don't. I really don't know all that much about the Anunnaki, so I can't say anything about them because I, I, I would be lying. You know what I mean? If, if yeah. I said I knew anything about them. Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, uh, the uh, 
Hebraic texts and all that they that's they come from Egypt and all of that came from uh, Mesopotamia I, so it's in Sumer so I, I I believe it all comes from the same place I think they're all talking about the same people just to be all the way honest the same beings it's just kind of you know it started you know with the Anunnaki and kind of spread to Judaism and all that so uh, I believe it's the same exact guys so uh, you know and um they they definitely uh they they claim that they were the ones who uh created us and genetically altered us too so you know it really goes with what you're saying too you know all right well that's cool but yeah everything begins and ends with the great pyramid the great pyramid is is where all this information is is contained and do you know why they built the the Great Pyramid so big, and just know this: no human had anything to do with the Great Pyramid. No, not for those pyramids on the Giza Plateau. No, those first three, no human had anything to do with those because we were apes at the time. But do you know why they built it so big? Why? So you couldn't knock it down. The talking apes couldn't knock it down. That's why it's so big and has so much information. It, it, that's why they built it so big, and because it contains a lot of stuff and it it has more than than twenty functions. But that's why, so we could knock it down. So we would find the information inside of it and learn, and uh, there you go. Wow, wow. Uh -huh. It's a, been quite uh, quite an amazing story, uh, Gary, and it's um, lots of information, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a lot. I'm brilliant, John. My God, I'm brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so interesting. I mean, and I think, you know, no matter what you're, uh, perspective or position on it is you got you know you got you, you can't help but find it you know just captivating man i mean it's, it's yeah i think a lot of things i say are fresh and new yes. you don't keep hearing like whenever i watch ancient aliens which i really don't watch anymore mm -hmm. they say the same old stuff over and over again oh look at this rotary mark this was done by a machine who cares get that get that fiber optic camera back into that hole and let's see a let's see a movie from 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 L and his people. You know what I mean? That would be awesome. And from Patan, Sekhmet, and Nefertem. Nefertem. Anyway, so you know what I'm saying? So yes. like, I'm tired of hearing the same old stuff. The stuff I'm saying is fresh and new. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it absolutely is. You definitely aren't aren't going to see that on the television. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. That'd be great. Yeah, man. Uh, maybe, maybe one day. But uh, I just, I think they don't. I, it's stuff like this that I think they try to keep from the masses. Just to be honest, because uh, well, that, I'm, I'm, then it's your responsibility and mine to share as much as we can. Absolutely, and um, that's you know that's my my own mission and and what I do is I try to you know bring the the truth to the light and. Um, you know, let people decide for themselves, you know, what they want to make of it, so. Excellent, excellent. So uh, I just, I really, I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time, Gary, to, to, to come on. I'm, I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to share, or. Oh, well, let me think, let me think. You know what, man, I don't think so. I think we, we did, what was great speaking with you is I didn't do the same, I, we jumped around, but I, I think it was, it, it still came out as kind of a cool beginning, middle, and end. Yes. Uh, so, because usually I start off talking way too much about myself, and uh, and this was perfect. So, so John, uh, I, I don't think I have anything else to say. Absolutely. I mean, I have a ton of more to say, <laughs> but I really hope your listeners get down to the water mm -hmm. and say the words. Yeah. And they make the connection, they go back home, and they can see everything in the photo. Absolutely, man. I do too. I, I really encourage people to just check it out, man. Just check it out. Yeah, your... it's not going to kill you. You stand in some water, you say some words. God forbid it opens up your brain. You see, you, you can see something new. You know. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So I just I want to thank you so much, Gary, and uh, you know maybe we have you back sometime and uh, you Brother, can. Any, if anything happens, I'll email you or call you and let you know if something big happens. Absolutely, and uh, and then we'll hop back on and and uh, and tell all your listeners. Absolutely, thank you so much for doing this. I really really appreciate it, man. Okay, brother. All Thanks, right. man. All right, thank you. You have a great night. All right, Tom. All right. Okay, guys, I just want to, you know, that's the amazing Gary Parker. And, uh, you know, I know that people's going to have mixed feelings about this one, and that's okay. Just, you know, be respectful to Gary because, um, 
you know, he's just trying to share what he's found. Uh, he's not telling you one way or the other. I'm not telling you one way or the other. I, like I said, my opinion is that we're looking at the Anunnaki. Um, I even point at the collar right here. If you ever look at pictures of the actual Anunnaki, they even have this thing around their neck that you kind of see at the bottom of the alien head. So um, it's just, it's a, you know, in the double wings, um, all of it, all of it, the, the, the soul thing. I mean, you know, we've seen Gnostic text, right? The, the Archonic soul trap, uh, you know, all of it, right? It kind of all makes sense when you look at this, the first book of Adam and Eve. I mean, everything, the book of Enoch, uh, we've covered a lot of these things that really fit the pieces together for what we're seeing here, you know, and uh, I have no doubt that this is the God of the Bible, you know, no, no doubt that this is the God of the Bible. And like I said, I did do an experiment when I first heard Gary about a year and a half ago. I said those words and I was standing in water and I shit you not, um, a UFO uncloaked itself in the sky. So, uh, you know, it really, it really made, you know, made me want to get him on after that, that point. And just a couple of weeks ago, I got his contact info and decided to do it. That way you guys could hear this crazy story, man. I mean, it's, it's wild and it's out there, but I do believe that he believes everything he's saying. And I, I believe there's truth in this. I believe there's truth in this, you know, so I'm not saying that this is the God that you fall on your knees and worship or even the God that is responsible for all of creation. But uh, genetic manipulation, probably, right? Um, the Anunnaki, probably, right? So um, the ones that, uh, you know, uh, Judaism is trying to, to, to bring back to the earth, yeah, probably again, you know? So... Um, all of that's probably true, you know, and I think that on this channel, at least, we discuss a lot of these things, and it, I'm not falling down worshiping anybody in a fucking body, just period, all right, that's me, so, you know, that's my, my personal thing, anybody with arms and legs was made, in my opinion, somebody had to make them, somebody stuck them in a body, so, um, I'm not falling down and worshiping none of them, but, you know, it's up to you, you know, it's up to you. And, you know, Gary feels like their intentions aren't bad. And I don't think they're going to present themselves with bad intentions either. Right? They, they may present themselves as saviors. You know, who knows? So, I do want to thank all of you guys in the chat. I see uh, Sterling Bruno, uh, Praise You Para Just Us, Tracy Roberts, uh, JC, Nikki Hampton, Peter Birdsell, Damon J, John Joseph, um, Michael Short, Deborah Norris, thank all of you, Karen Wager, thank all of you guys, Vision in Christ, I appreciate all you guys for, for being here and, you know, being polite and um, respectful to Gary while he was telling his, um, you know, his giving his spiel here and Dreamosaurus, letting everybody see what he has found. And, you know, I, I myself, you know, I started this channel because of a dream that a voice spoke to me. So I don't, I don't think that he's lying. I do, I know for a fact that this happens. Maybe if it wouldn't have happened to me and I wasn't shown a giant ass red planet in the sky, you know, with a dream, then maybe I, I, I would be questioning it. But it's happened to me. And like I said, I've done what this guy said to do and even seen something. So... You know, and I don't think I'm special. I think we're all capable of this. So we're all capable of communicating with all kinds of things, all kinds of things. We're powerful beings. We really are. We really, really are. So uh, if you guys have any, you know, crazy stories, encounters, anything like that, email me, the real best damn podcast at gmail.com. Uh, please consider donating, supporting the channel. That's how we keep this thing going. The uh, PayPal.me forward slash the best damn podcast or we have patreon venmo and facebook fundraiser all the links are in the description as well as pin in the top of the comment section i'll have to add in the link to gary's video as well as his uh, twitter and email in the description but i will uh, after the show tonight i'll probably have it up there by tomorrow for you guys 
Um, yeah, what else? Oh, make sure to join the, the Discord group, the Facebook group. I'm currently blocked from posting in the Facebook groups right now. I think I can post in my own, but that's it. So uh, I get manned at least three or four times a month from there, so it's kind of normal. Um, and, you know, guys, please, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up and share it. You know, this is a pretty wild one, so maybe other people would want to see it and check it out. And, you know, once again, big ups to Gary Parker for coming on. It takes, you know, whether, no matter who these beans are, it takes some balls to get to get out there to the public and say, hey, I was visiting a dream about this. Check this out. There's these giant-ass aliens that harvest souls and... That's who they got in the Bible. That takes some nuts, man. So, you know, we should we should at least be respectful and kind. You know, at least that, you know. So, thank all of you guys. I appreciate you all. And remember, Jesus is the truth, the way, and the light. God bless you guys. I love you. And I will see you next time. Y'all have a good night. Oh,